are in Baird Country. Okay, welcome to Baird Country. That's what I'm calling this. All right. Be careful. You're in Baird Country. <laughs> uh, we got an awesome guest here today. We have Wyatt Black from Season 10 of Alone, and we're going to be talking about survival. Wyatt is a local boy from my area in Ontario, from the Bracebridge area, actually. He's a longtime big game hunter, bush guy, uh, jack of all trades, carpenter as, or a contractor as yep. well, and uh, a survival expert now, apparently, <laughs> apparently too. Yes. And uh, anybody that's seen uh, season 10 of Alone, you're going to love uh, watching it because Wyatt was on it. Amazing, amazing season. And I got him here. We're going to be chatting a little bit about survival in the outdoors and all the stuff we love talking about that's it yeah, yeah. thanks yeah. jim i appreciate you having me here no problem so uh so what you're telling me this story where uh it's, it's almost dark out right and uh, you're bow hunting and you're you're trying to get you're bow hunting for bears not yeah. just anything and uh it's dark it's dark and you're waiting it's almost dark Yep. Sh legal shooting light and uh, you're waiting for this bear specific bear to come in but you know there's a lot of bears in the area well i'd been sitting there that night and mm -hmm. uh you know get there you know three four hours before dark yeah. type thing and mm -hmm. uh you know i had a had a pretty good spot set up and i knew yeah. there was a bunch of bears and i had this one on camera he was mm -hmm. siberian you know the white patch on the front oh, cool. pretty distinctive yeah. you know yeah and uh just that right size of bear that you know yeah. i didn't want to take a monster because yeah. and you know i'm certainly not going to shoot a sow with a cub or yeah. uh, a sow if i can identify her at all so yeah. uh you know i had this one and i had him picked out pretty good about a 250 mm -hmm. 300 pound bear mm -hmm. and uh anyways i was sitting there waiting and in comes a bear in comes another one a sow with a year and a half old type cub and mm -hmm. all of a sudden i've had five bears in and around and just that last, you know, 15 minutes of shooting light type thing. And I could see him coming like very distinctive because of the white chest. And mm -hmm. All of a sudden he come into range and all the other bears, he was obviously pushing the, and the sows don't want their cubs around any other boar. Mm -hmm. He came in and he finally gave me that shot and I quilled him. I don't know if you've ever heard that death moan a bear mm -hmm. makes, but if you've mm -hmm. made that perfect shot, they go nowhere. And as they, lay, it's just kind of like, a and, and you know, they're done. You know, yeah. they're done. Yeah. So I wait just to be sure, and I climb down, and by the time I'm out of my stand, it's pitch black. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, I've been in the bush a long time, and I, you know, been around bears. I walk into my stand mm -hmm. in the dark, baited, all the rest of a walk out in the dark. Never, had, but that night, you know, I just knew those other five were all around me within yeah. that last twenty <laughs> minutes, half hour, and. Yeah. I knew the whole time I'm wow. cleaning this bear and I'm getting it ready to take out. I'm just. It was like I wanted eyes in the back yeah. of my head and every noise and everything. I'm just, I had never been so jumpy in the bush in my whole yeah. life. It so was you knew there was just a bear over your shoulder. Everywhere, literally. yeah. Was it, was it a bad berry year that year? Uh, or was it spring or fall? It was, it was a fall. It was yeah, a fall it, hunt. Yeah, that yeah. was uh, back before the uh, spring bear right. hunt reopened. Yeah. yeah. Because I've heard what can happen sometimes when it's a bad bear year and it's the fall and bears are starting to think about hibernation that they're kind of starve and they'll cannibalize another dead bear. Oh, yeah. So if you shoot a dead bear and other bears will come in to eat that dead bear. The one thing about, you yeah. know, bears in the fall mm -hmm. and in the spring, a lot of people don't mm -hmm. realize, you know, just like everything else, they're looking for the heaviest fat protein. Right. Uh, they're, they're all about the fat mm -hmm. and nuts. That's why acorns and stuff, they'll bypass mm -hmm. so many other foods and stuff. In the spring, all they want is the grass to let their stomach resettle and what have you. Mm -hmm. You could put rotten meat out and they won't touch it. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing more fatty than a bear. They're, right. So Maybe they, a beaver, but not eat, as much fat. No, and yeah. so that's why beaver is one of the best baits for a bear. Like if you've got mm -hmm. a beaver carcass, mm -hmm. they love it. Mm -hmm. But exactly what you're saying, they mm -hmm. know that all that fat's right there on that other bear. You know, it's like a, it's like a grizzly and stuff eating a salmon. They'll peel the skin off it and eat the head and that's it, you know, and the, and the eggs out of it, all the, and they leave the whole carcass mm -hmm. and then the eagles and the other stuff mm -hmm. come in and get that. And it's 
all just part of they and know. it rots into the ground and fertilizes uh the the wild plants exactly. and stuff that's why with the frankenstein foods and, and store-bought strawberries they added like genes of a salmon to one of them because they grow so much better because apparently yep. in bc all that rotting salmon where there's a salmon run really helps those strawberries grow and become delicious fish emulsions yeah. like when i was a kid my grandfather would send you down to the creek to mm. beer the suckers or not the suckers and mm. he'd go and he'd plant one on each end of every oh, row yeah. in the garden and one in the middle nice you know? and, yeah i yeah. used us uh, do you, you ever do any smelting oh yeah all right the time. yeah okay so i just got into it and i'm like why haven't i been doing this all my life that's me that's our date night here in the mag right. magnetic on date drinking night. <laughs> 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 love it but i i ended up getting so much of it so much much of them and also they are an invasive species you're just yep. not allowed to sell them right um so uh we ended up using some to fertilize our three sisters garden and my corn grew freaking like better than ever way taller than anticipated there's right? actually uh yeah. there's a yeah. couple different yeah. fish emulsion fertilizers yeah. one's mm -hmm. called musky and what have you and that's all they are is yeah. basically a fish emulsion and mm -hmm. they're fabulous i grow i've got a large garden and stuff and because i keep bees and whatever Mm -hmm. I don't use any pesticides and all my fertilizers organic and what have you, you know, mm. a lot of that stuff like sting and nettle. Mm. I don't know if you're familiar with that stuff. I am. You're right. Yeah. So. Yeah. The first time I'm I, on me, I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> ah! You know what I mean? Yeah, and then I'm like, oh, it's this thing. It's like, it's like the first time you hear a screech owl and you right? think someone's being murdered. Yeah. And then your dad's like, that's well, just a screech owl, uh, son. Yeah. Or, you know what I mean? And you're like, oh, thank God you told just me that. The hair's right up yeah. on your spine. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's how stinging nettle was. I thought like my arm was about to fall off. Right. Essentially. Well, it's a it's a heavy, heavy fertilizer and it mm -hmm. grows in very, very fertile soil. Okay. And yeah. so if you take stinging nettle and you cut it and you put it in a five-gallon bucket and fill it with, with water and make a compost tea out of it, it's one of the best natural organic mm -hmm. fertilizers you can use for your garden. Mm -hmm. Uh, same thing if you use the, the leaves and make a tincture out of uh, vodka or grain alcohol. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got so many health benefits. It's unreal. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the nettle, eh? The nettle, yes. Also, the, you can, it, the fibers yep. are so strong, you can make a bowstring out of it, Is that which right? also I, blows my mind. Yeah. I, yeah, I didn't know that the, one. Just the straight up, the twisting yeah. mechanism. I didn't know the, the tincture one either. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, you straight up just the tw the twist method. Fold it uh, away, twist, fold it. Oh, was it towards? I don't know. Same way you you make cordage, right? And uh, it's insanely strong. Like you can you know draw right. a freaking fifty pound bow with it. That's one of the know? beauties of like uh, guys like us getting together and mm -hmm. with old people and stuff. Like mm -hmm. there's so much knowledge out there yeah. about the woods and about things that we love to well, do. Well, I, I pretty much know everything. So there's, a, <laughs> like, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I, no, know, right? I, I couldn't agree with you more, man. Yeah. Like, and, yeah. You know, and that's kind of how I grew up was like talking to old trappers yeah. and old hunters mm -hmm. and they always had the coolest stories and they always mm -hmm. had the patience and, I was one of those guys that I need to be shown how to do things. Mm -hmm. You know, you could tell somebody all day long, mm -hmm. but they won't get it. That was mm -hmm. me. And I had the luxury of having those mm -hmm. old fellows that would take me by the hand and show mm -hmm. me and, hey, kid, this is how you do this. And, right. You know, and that stuff would stick with me forever, you know, yeah. and, and I love that. And yeah. I was pretty blessed to have that. But, you know, having these conversations, it's like the world is an endless book of knowledge and, yeah. and when we're all in this it just kind of flows naturally and mm -hmm. I, I love that about you know the outdoor community absolutely i almost feel like thirsty when i'm not learning new stuff right and that's why i'm so interested in all these kind of areas of survival of like you know me doing my large scale kind of expeditionary whitewater canoe trips right it's not really about a canoe it's about where it'll get you where it takes you and i need to learn these survival skills because you know you're using them every day to an extent but if something goes wrong and you're in the middle of nowhere, right? I need to use those too, but then everything else fascinates me. Now I'm, you know, like you're talking about growing food, growing corn, growing vegetables, kind of like uh, uh, being sort of a, a more like self-reliant, keeping that freezer full of healthy meat for your family. Um, it just like, for me, it's just like, it's all of these things, just a, a lifestyle, and you know. Yeah, you know, it, it's yeah. funny. When I was a kid, yeah. We'd go down mm. to the garden every night after work or after school, you know, and dad would yeah. take you down or mom would take you down or grandpa. Mm. And we learned, don't pick that. That's the carrots. Don't right. pick that. That's the beets. These are the weeds, you know, mm. and you learn every row. Mm. When my boys were growing up, it was the same thing. We do a certain amount in the garden every night. Mm. You know, that's why you got to work to go play hockey and you got to work mm. to go play baseball. And, you know, mm -hmm. but 
work was also teaching mm -hmm. and they would bring their friends over and unless the fruit was growing on the plant none of them would have a clue mm -hmm. what was growing mm -hmm. you know and that's the parents bad you know mm -hmm. that's society's bad where mm -hmm. you know everybody thinks we just go to the grocery store and get well, it well people don't know milk comes from cows exactly right? right or they think you're bad because you're eating a deer but they're like pounding freaking lamb every night exactly they're right. just eating a baby sheep like you know what i mean right. they don't yeah. realize yeah. that they don't realize yeah. that a cow was not a domestic animal until right. we domesticated right them, you know yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. Chickens yeah. were like a partridge, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. That would be cool if there's like a, a wild cow season, though. I right? don't think they exist in the wild anywhere, though. Uh, that, you know, yeah. it's the same. We don't look at eating horses mm -hmm. as uh, what they were eating for years yeah, all yeah. through. Uh, you know, a lot of European countries. Dogs, too, unfortunately. Exactly. hate to say it, but, uh, you yeah, know, you know I, it's a lot of, uh, we're probably more cultures ate them than didn't. Right. Know? And, yeah. and, you know, people don't understand what we're doing to our foods to make mm. it grow more and uh, mm. i'm gonna do a little thing on like all this gmo stuff and whatever mm. they're it's all about control um if you look at her, uh, heritage seeds heirloom mm. seeds and what have you if you're growing those seeds mm. you're able to create seeds that will grow again mm -hmm. with all these gmo ones and what have you they're making it so you can't harvest mm -hmm. the seeds to grow other mm -hmm. ones so you're gonna have to buy the seeds every year mm -hmm. and you're gonna have to have all their strains yeah you and, can't yeah you can't i wonder how they would do that with corn how because corn is the seed the kernels on the corn are the seed you know how do you make corn that you can't regrow you basically you well you basically that's, make it stagnant that's you, crazy you know it, that's it, crazy. it's like you know it's almost yeah. like snipping a dog you know yeah, right. <laughs> it, it, it is right yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's what yeah. we do with gmo yeah, you know yeah. and uh it's disgusting yeah. you know and we're feeding everything to grow so much faster yeah. and all the rest of it like if people you know my buddy and i we were raising pigs and we had these pigs and they'd come up and they'd run around free like they yeah. and they'd come up and they'd scratch you like a dog mm -hmm. and you know you give them an apple and mm -hmm. they were almost like pets mm -hmm. and then one day exactly and people mm -hmm. would say how could you do that mm -hmm. and i go when you look at it mm -hmm. i'm gonna eat a pig every year right doesn't matter yeah so i can either go to the grocery store right. and i can buy a pig that's walked around in its own feces all day uh -huh. being cramped in a box that it can hardly turn around in right. standing in you know eating the same genetically modified crap yeah. food yeah or yeah. i can have a pig that will live twice as long uh -huh. live a healthy free lifestyle right and create a better product for my family right die a humane mm -hmm. and uh and quick death mm -hmm. and be treated with respect its whole life mm -hmm. how is that not better Right. When you're going to eat that pig every, yeah. it's the same as a chicken, yeah. it, you know, and I'm a firm believer that yeah. every animal, whether it's mm -hmm. on a farm or whether it's in the wild, mm -hmm. deserves the same respect, the same mm -hmm. as humans. Mm -hmm. We, you know, uh, you have to treat everything the way we want to be treated. You know, mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to go and leave a beer can in the bush or mm -hmm. anything. You know, I, I used, yeah, me neither. I me used neither. to get so mad. My yeah. buddy, Aaron and I, we went yeah. into Algonquin park years ago. Yeah. And it was four and a half kilometer portage mm -hmm. just to put our canoe in the water. Mm -hmm. We were going into Black Fox Lake. I don't know if you've ever been to that one or not. It's right I off don't. the Lake of Two Rivers at the sanitation uh, dump. I'll go this spring. Okay, you go into Hiram and White Gull and all mm -hmm. those. So anyways. I usually do a spec trip there yeah, every year. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so that's where we were going. We were going in mm -hmm. speckle trout fishing. We get in there, and it's disgusting. Mm -hmm. it, him and I carried out a garbage mm -hmm. bag each of other people's garbage mm -hmm. of cans and stuff that were left. And if you can carry it in there full, mm -hmm. why the hell can't you carry it out empty? Like mm -hmm. what's wrong with us? You know, I don't know. and yeah. I shouldn't have to clean up anybody else's mess, but I'd yeah. feel bad leaving it there right. just because I don't want my kids to see that the yeah. next time I take them there. Hundred percent, and then it, some. It sits there for ages too. I have uh, so a friend of mine uh, in Moosey, Logan Jeffries. He's Cree, so he gave me a Cree name after he watches my videos and a few good chats with him. So he gave me a Cree name, which is Winisk, which means groundhog and i said that's crazy i was born on groundhog day my mom used to call me a groundhog this is cool he's like well the reason we're calling this is because you can never see a groundhog's poop 
He's like, you'll never see it. They're the cleanest animals. So because we never see you poop in your YouTube videos, <laughs> we're calling you Winnis. We're calling you Groundhog. But it's a better metaphor for that. He always sees me leave the land clean. Right. You know what I mean? Which is, which was, uh, uh, you know, a, a massive compliment. Well, and, and yeah. that's, mm. you know, mm. that's a sign of respect. Yeah. And, you know, mm. that's what a lot of people don't realize about, men like us women mm -hmm. like us children like us mm -hmm. that grow up the way we do we're mm -hmm. taught respect right and respect is expected of us mm -hmm. you know and it becomes to the point where we expect it of ourselves mm -hmm. and that's a beautiful thing you know uh when i went out to reindeer lake i i said that to the Cree. thank you for letting me be here mm -hmm. i will treat your land like my own and i will mm -hmm. leave it the way i found it mm -hmm. and you know if we all did that mm -hmm. uh we wouldn't have those messes to clean up in Algonquin Park. And it would solve a lot of problems. Sure would. And Algonquin, after the pandemic, all these people were getting into the outdoors, going in there, deciding, I don't want to carry this. There's garbage left all over the place. Just because people weren't taught or they didn't think, and it doesn't necessarily make them bad people, but the education, it, it, you know, it needs to be out there and people need to kind of think about what they're doing a little bit more. Right. It, it, you know, it's like that old saying, common sense. It ain't that common. Right. And, you know, <laughs> That's the truth, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, not everybody's had the luxury yeah. of being taught. And, right. you know, hopefully, you know, one or two lessons and they learn. Yeah. You know, with the, and then you feel bad. Like, oh, man, I should have known that. But, exactly. You know, yeah, most of the time. I like to think that in general, some people just don't give a shit, though. No, you know, they don't. There's that, too. But, and, you know, yeah. as a rule, we are the biggest pathogens on this earth. Yeah. Uh, we're, <laughs> yeah. we're a disgusting species. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, there's... <laughs> Uh, it, it, it's really yeah. in so many ways i yeah. i hate being called a human because right. uh right. It, it, we are disgusting mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's a shame mm -hmm. so why how do so i'm listening to uh survival expert now you i know you probably wouldn't go out there and call yourself a survival not expert, at all but when people are watching you and what you pulled off being able to get food for yourself we'll talk about that a little bit because you know there's a lot i learned from that experience too but what gave you this skill like how did you get into this and at what point were you like were you were you sort of like this is what this is me. I need more. I have the, this hunger for outdoor knowledge. I have this hunger to be in the bush. I, I have a passion for for hunting, for feeding myself, for all these kinds of things. Um, is there a point in your life where that clicked? I think about birth. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, as a kid, I can remember my dad and my grandpa yeah. and them packing up to go deer hunting or packing mm -hmm. up to go moose hunting and it was a big deal like we weren't in an area where you could just go out your back door and go deer hunting like right. i've been blessed to do and mm -hmm. what have you uh we lived down south and there wasn't a deer around there wasn't mm -hmm. a moose around there wasn't a bear around so mm -hmm. uh you know they had to travel to go and do that hunt and mm -hmm. i was so envious and mm -hmm. you know it was to hear all their stories when right. they come back and stuff yeah it was just a wanting desire as a kid that like when I was able to go my first time, right. I didn't sleep for a week. You know, it was right. like, I was so excited yeah. to go. How old were you? Uh, 12. Yeah, and no you know, kidding. it was first year I could get my license and yeah. what have you. And yeah. it was just, uh, I shot my first moose in 1987, you wow. know? Yeah. It was, uh, um, and things like that, you know, I just can't remember mm -hmm. when, uh, I didn't have that boiling mm -hmm. in my veins mm -hmm. when I was like, could walk back to the bush i can remember my grandpa my dad and my uncle david they'd be back in the bush and you could hear the hounds running the white rabbits and you could hear the shotgun snapping off mm -hmm. and my grandfather would be we had a, he had a 225 acre farm just outside of stainer and warren and i my younger brother we we're barely just big enough to walk and we'd be trucking through the snow mm -hmm. and i can remember my grandfather standing there with a great big smile on his face and he'd chuckle and give his arm away and come on you two mm -hmm. and we'd just be you know it's funny how life turns around <laughs> mm -hmm. uh because mm -hmm. one day i was standing in the field mm -hmm. going come on old man <laughs> mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he still had that same big smile on his mm -hmm. face and you know uh I was standing there waiting for him and yeah. you know that's how life's supposed to work that's and your grandpa eh? yeah. yeah 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 i yeah i i'm kind of getting to 
that point a little bit with uh, with my parents are aging too, and um, you know you, you, the tables sort of turn. Yeah, you know, you know yeah. my dad, he's uh, mm -hmm. what's he going to be? He's going to be seventy eight here on the fourteenth of February, mm -hmm. and you know mm -hmm. getting a little long in the tooth, mm -hmm. but he still gets out there and goes deer mm -hmm. hunting and moose hunting and fishing, mm -hmm. and still goes fishing. He, oh yeah, yeah he yeah. keeps busy, and he mm -hmm. you know he's uh, mm -hmm. he's always been that way, and you know mm -hmm. that. It, my grandfather, you know, he shot his last deer in uh, when he was eighty six mm -hmm. years old on mm -hmm. December uh, December fifth with me, and uh, that was the that was the last day I ever seen mm -hmm. him. Uh, mm -hmm. And but he kept going right till the right day till the end. Yeah, yeah, you know that that's what yeah. living's all about. Yeah, you're giving me goosebumps here, man. <laughs> it, 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 you know. <sighs> It's hard for people that aren't, you know, privileged. I mean, we can call it privilege. It doesn't mean we're privileged with money necessarily, no, but no. we're privileged with that, that, uh, 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 you know, lesson taught to us about the outdoors. The memories you make, the bonds that you make with people like your family, the, the, the heritage, that tradition, it's, it's so hard for people uh, to understand how much it means to us. You know what I mean? These, these kind of memories. And I, you know, it, it, it goes back to when you're talking about how you were born this way, right? Um, there's an interesting article uh, in that geo article, and it's called the explorer's gene. Apparently one in nine people um, are, have that gene and they're way more likely to like adventure. They're way, way more likely to just take calculated risks right. and that kind of stuff. And just from hearing you talk already, I'm like, well, this guy obviously has that. I say the same thing. I said, ever since I was just a tiny kid, I always wanted to be where there was nothing further North than me. You know right. what I mean? I always want to be in like this wild space. Right. And I, I just think that's, yeah, it's gotta be something that's born to you. But you also, like you're saying, you had the a grandfather, a father, they're into that they had these amazing times with you that also taught you exactly. uh, things and you know it you makes know, the it, learning curve a lot less uh, even sharp. my grandmother mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. like it, it's what you my grandmother taught me how to cook certain things how mm -hmm. to do certain things with certain plants mm -hmm. and, and what have you you know mm -hmm. and it's what you're willing to pay attention to mm -hmm. and what you're willing to um uh, how do you want to say it? what you're willing to risk um mm -hmm. you know it doesn't matter what we do as long mm -hmm. as it makes you feel full and happy and mm -hmm. uh i've been blessed by that and the woods are my yeah. thing for that uh, being alone yeah i never thought mm -hmm. that i would get the reward of being alone mm -hmm. that i did get um mm -hmm. you know i've always been a very social person mm -hmm. uh, my sister and my brother, they'd all tell you that was going to be my downfall was I'm a social, Being I got to have yeah. people around yeah. and I'm, yeah. you know, and, uh, I loved it. I want to yeah. go back. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I really yeah. did. You really did, man. And, uh, you know, obviously there's going to be some spoilers in this conversation, oh, yeah. but just the positive attitude that you kind of kept up throughout the thing. I was like, this guy is freaking inspiring. You know, and then, uh, you know, one of the unfortunate things that happens that people don't really see because they have to condense the end of the show so much, because at that point it's freezing cold. The days are short. You can't go outside. People are much weaker and there's less, there's fewer people left. Yeah. So they can't, they, they don't have as many people to jump to, not as much content. Right. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, I always think that the people watching, they don't really realize how hard those last few days were and you were positive right to the end and what i loved about you is you're just like well i think i've had about enough of this you know what i mean like no shame no you're just like it wasn't like uh rent all these ex you know not i don't want to say excuses but we're all prone to try to make excuses for ourselves or find a reason but you're just like yeah you know i i think i've had enough of it. after 64 freaking 64 freaking days man yep. that's a long time you know it is and you know yeah. it, it was yeah. they didn't uh, you know, it, it's hard to describe, yeah. but I spent uh, eight forty three in yeah. the morning is when I had the sun coming up there, yeah. and I yeah, it was, beautiful. It was. Yeah. And you'll notice there was no fire or nothing there, mm -hmm. and I shut the camera off and I went mm -hmm. for a walk, mm -hmm. and I was just thinking, you know, am I really mm -hmm. good with leaving? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I didn't spend sixty four days out there to quit. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. But I hadn't slept in four days. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I laid there every night shivering, frozen. Mm. I <laughs> couldn't get full. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't get warm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, but my brain was still good. Yeah. Uh, I was, and, but I had to be sure. And mm. uh, when I finally tapped, you'll see a great big ring from where I had a, and I burnt every piece of wood yeah, I had. I yeah. ate three big pieces of fish. Nice. And I was just trying, just get warm. Give me a day. Yeah. And it just wasn't there. Right. And that's when I said, okay, I'm done. Yeah. And yeah. I was good with it because yeah. I mm. knew in my own mm. soul there was nothing more to give. That's a and yeah. just that's, such a positive experience. It is. You know, a lot of people would look at that and they'd say, Oh man, imagine being second. Well, obviously I'd rather be second than anything else. Do right. you know? But except for, you know, maybe for first, women. let's be honest, you know. Yeah, but, no, to, it, but that's right. Not even necessarily. Right. There's like if some... you come first and you're freaking snapped and you're in a basket case, it's just, it's just your journey was, was deep, man. Like you, you, it was, it was about the journey that you had. This is what I'm getting from watching the show, which only really can show a snippet of it. Yep. But um, yeah, it, it was your journey. You seem to be just absolutely crushing it. You seem to be really enjoying your time out there. And uh, also you seem to be really good with how your journey kind of came to an end out there, you know? Uh, very much so. Yeah. You know, the, the uh, indigenous people out there, uh, they told me mm -hmm. uh, that I was not meant to win, um, mm -hmm. that I would not be able to follow the path that I uh, am supposed to follow if I had a one. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why mother nature treated me as good as she did out there. Cause mm -hmm. I did, I did well. I ate over 150 pounds of fish. I shot two <laughs> pine martins. I shot nine grouse. Dude, I shot you were 12 just red squirrels. sniping with that boat. Nine grouse too, yeah. eh? You know, yeah. the funny part is, is Mikey shot 19. Did he? They didn't. They only oh, showed. Oh, man. Yeah. Maybe he didn't capture it well enough or, or something. They, eh? No, he did. But ah. they wanted to focus on the rats, you know, right, and, and right, didn't want, yeah. you know, they, they yeah. do the show. They do, and, yeah. They have to turn you into, you know, you focus on one sort of character instead of being all over the place. Right. And it's also what they have in the footage too, right? Exactly. So, yeah. And, you know, um, and Alan, he, he shot five grouse. He got 22 lake trout or something, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. But so I also had 10 quarts of berries, 10 yeah. pounds of mushrooms, yeah. you know. Uh, so when you, I figure I ate somewhere in the neighborhood of about 220 pounds of food mm -hmm. over those 64 days. Mm -hmm. That's over three pounds of food a day. Mm -hmm. And I still mm -hmm. lost 1.13 pounds a day. <sighs> Doesn't that blow you? So that was one of my biggest take homes is, is how much food we actually eat, right. right? Without actually realizing it was the first one. And you could probably relate to this after that experience. And also the amount of work it takes to actually procure that food, cook it, preserve it, store it, and actually sit there and eat it. And then how much little time you have left at the end of the day to do all the other things. Well, that's, you know, a, you know that's why I yeah. lost those two fish. Yeah. People don't oh, know yeah. the whole story because they show, oh, dumbass goes and puts him in the a live waves. well. Didn't you watch Brit lose his fish they that did, way? Yeah, yeah, right? And yeah. I, I knew that. I yeah. talked about it. I yeah. said, I know this is wrong. I know this is wrong. Yeah. We had just spent 80 hours in our shelter mm -hmm. with wind that was just unbearable. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, the trees were caked right over. Like, mm -hmm. it was unbelievable wind. For mm -hmm. We had straight warnings for three days straight, mm -hmm. 24 hours, stay in your shelter, don't do any activity coming yeah. on our GPS, right? Yeah. I had burnt every bit of firewood I had. Mm -hmm. I had one more piece of fish left. Mm -hmm. And the weather broke. Mm -hmm. It was the evening. I'm like, I got to get out of my shelter. So I just get out of my shelter. I go down to my point, take a couple casts, bang, got a trout, bang, got another. I'm okay. This is cool. Mm -hmm. But it's 70 degrees out. Mm -hmm. If I hang them in a tree, I'm going to have them full of maggots by morning. Mm -hmm. If I throw them out on a stringer, I'm going to end up losing them to whatever is going to grab them out there. Otter plus lose probably. my, uh, yeah. Uh, and that's what I think took them anyway. No snappers the, there. The otter, no snappers. No, yeah. none of that. Um, but I had no firewood, yeah. so I was going to have to get all... My, I just stayed awake for 80 hours. Like, it wasn't I'm talking just in my shelter. It was so loud I couldn't even sleep. Crazy. So yeah. I'm dog tired, but I just had to get out for that walk. Now I've burnt all my firewood, so yeah. I thought, you know what? They're going to be fine. They're only 30 yards from my shelter. Mm -hmm. I'll hear anything, you know. 
Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. I went out like a light. What I'm sure it was the otters because mm-hmm. they left all the scales. They ate them right oh, there. Oh, is it? Oh, oh man, they'll get you, man. Yeah, they'll I had five of them on camera, and I knew damn. I'm well surprised the fishing was so good at your spot with the otters even being there. Oh, Must be well, just they loaded. were traveling all around. All right. yeah, yeah, they were, and there's so many damn fish in that lake. Yeah, it's unreal. Just loaded. It, 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 it'd be funny because, yeah. like Alan and I were talking, they show where he missed six in a row. Mm-hmm. I said, I'm sure it was the same day because I missed nine. And no, I'm kidding. freaking having a meltdown yeah. because what kind of cattle, what are these? And yeah, I, you know, yeah. I. Was to, that the day? That wasn't the day you lost your, uh, your, your lure. What did you call no, that one the, again? the gold hellfire? Yeah. No, yeah. that was, that was the first one I lost. And oh man, lost hundreds of li- lures. That was in a my beautiful life. lure. How did you make that? I just carved a piece of, I yeah. got a, all mine were carved out of driftwood because yeah. I, I wanted them to be so dry that they'd have no... You ever throw like a spruce or and then you get that like gasoline type vapor that comes off it because of the pit. Uh, you, you ever drop pit yeah, in the water and yeah. see the like... Right. right? So That's I didn't want to use anything... Smart. I didn't want to use yeah. anything fresh. Yeah. So I was looking for all the driftwood along yeah. the shore. So I, every lure I carved was out of driftwood. Mm-hmm. And I just carve a shape of a lure. Mikey Helton, mm-hmm. I, Mikey from the show there... Uh, he made me a lure just before we went out that mm-hmm. he carved. I still got it at home. Nice. And he put the uh, red eyes on it with yeah. the berries and what have you. And I was like, and he's like, hey, brother. I said, they won't let me take it, but I'll, right. I'll catch a fish with it when I go home, brother. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, and, it, you know, we were all very good at sharing knowledge out there. Like mm-hmm. I taught Ann how to call, call moose. And mm-hmm. the first grouse that Mikey shot was with one of my flu flu arrows. He'd mm-hmm. never, he'd never sh- seen a flu flu arrow in his life. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, um, I gave him a bunch of arrows. I took probably 70 arrows with me because mm-hmm. I didn't know what all I was going to. So I wanted to make sure I had forever. Then I, you know, we're only allowed 10 items, but I probably right. took 16 or 17 items out. Right. And, right. Uh, you just because you had the other things you're automatically allowed to have, right? Right. And, yeah. you know, just take those. And I'd never seen the train. So mm-hmm. I figured, okay, I'll make my last decisions on the couple things when I get out there. Right. You know, right. I might need a shovel. I might need it. Oh, you, know. you, you brought 16 items to the launch. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I see yeah, what yeah. you're I saying. Then you had the, to pare it down right. and make that final decision. Yeah. It's a tough decision, isn't it? Isn't it ever? Yeah. And yeah. I, uh, salt. You yeah. know, Luke took salt. His dad, oh, okay. one of yeah. the best survival act, Larry Dean Olson's mm. one of the pioneers of survival, mm. you know, mm. uh, founder of the rabbit stick festival and all kinds cool. of things, you wow. know, numerous yeah. books. Um, Luke took salt mm-hmm. and mm. you know, that's when I'd the, rather have like a water bottle, like a metal water bottle or a, a, something. Yeah. Well, Me. dehydration was the main yeah. reason I tapped. Uh, yeah. I, 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 couldn't retain water mm-hmm. anymore mm-hmm. and when my body started shutting down mm-hmm. it was because that's why my when i pulled that toenail off yeah. i had actually lifted every other toenail hanging by a thread i could have just pulled them all off that night like mm-hmm. it was just and that was due was to that me. just because your boots were too tight no it was because of lit- dehydration oh shit yeah. wow yeah so you pushed yourself good man yeah it, I, yeah and i was great right up till day 55 mm-hmm. things started to go a little bit on uh, squirrely I, I could see it starting to fade yeah right right and yeah. uh i'd went 21 days without a bowel movement mm-hmm. wow yeah and yeah. day 22 i spent three hours yeah. out in the bush uh with about oh, minus man. seven minus oh, eight no. sleet rain snow coming freezing my nuts just off trying to over away. a log and oh yeah just, i remember <laughs> doing that something like that myself and I, I didn't have my camera on me but i realized the audio was still hooked up <laughs> So I bet somebody's at, back at the, you know, looking through all the footage and they just hear me like, ah, you know, making these like death sounds because it was like, I was eating these shore crabs, eh? And I was just eating them whole. I ended up giving up on that because it wasn't doing anything. Right. And it was just like raw card and like, sh- like felt like shitting out razor blades or something. It was terrible. It was yeah. like a very, very unpleasant experience. Yeah. And this poor bastard probably had to listen to it back at the production <laughs> office, man. Like, yeah. You know, I made wild. sure my camera was off for that episode. So smart it, but it smart. was uh it was yeah. it almost made me top it yeah. was like I, it was three three and yeah. a half hours literally oh, yeah. in excruciating yeah. cramp those pain. are the moments at that many days in where you're yeah. just like okay this might be the time you know yeah but you know yeah. It, it's like everything else you know yeah. you mm-hmm. you grab a new wind and you and mm-hmm. you know i went another nine days after that mm-hmm. um and yeah. nine days just for people that don't understand is kind of feels like you know oh. a month yeah at that point especially for like sure. alan like and I one were, day is a mission right yeah at alan and i point. were talking yeah. about it like when it yeah. got to the point where there was only like you know 
it didn't get light till like 8 30 in the morning mm -hmm. and and it was dark by five o'clock mm -hmm. at night again you were spending yeah. so much time in the shelter yeah it took a lot a lot out of you and it yeah. took a lot of mental fortitude to to yeah. stay out there i I, yeah. I can't how long were you and your brother out there 75 yeah 75 so I, our, ours was a bit of a different kind of uh um competition than than yours was right because oh, we had much. two people yeah but we also had to start in a completely like obviously there's a ton of similarities yeah, too yeah. but we had to start in a completely different uh, uh area so and i had to do this crazy trek to meet my brother which i think it said it took me 10 days i thought it was eight for another guy it took him 14 days right and we just had a compass bearing so we didn't really know what where we were going um we didn't, like as in we didn't have a map i didn't know if i was going to find my brother in 10 minutes or in, in 10 days like right. it was which was really which is part of the challenge right. of just I guess a real survival is like that. A shipwreck. Are you going to get rescued or are you going to, your bones going to be found? So you were allowed years. a compass? Yeah. So they took it away from us though. Once you got yes. to your, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So once we got, they, they took the compass and the hiking period stuff, but I could use a compass and it was, I was walking through some of the craziest terrain ever. What I did, I took my two gators, I put them upside down and tied the ends off. And then I just filled them full of mushrooms so I just ate freaking cold mushrooms. I, I, I boiled them, ate those, woke up in the morning, just ate cold mushrooms out of my hat, just soggy, the odd slug yeah. in there, just powered through, yeah. found my brother. Um, but uh, yeah, the, so so there was that trek. So but even so the first eight days, you're ex putting out a lot of energy, so right, in those eight up days. So were like a fire for smoke signals? To, were you trying No, the, the, uh, what I did was I essentially just put my, I just, uh, set my bearing off because I knew my brother was on the coast. Right. So I set it off. So I knew when I hit the coast, I could follow the turn right and follow the coast and right. I'd find him. And that's what happened. And I heard him chopping wood. And I'm like, Dad, he's a gem. I'm like, Dad, <laughs> it was pretty cool, man. But no doubt. You know, I, so I, I guess a, a question now, I've done some trips where I've been alone, um, completely alone, 36 days very very hard trips but i have a map i can make a mental plan i can say okay well i can hit my blizzard for nine days but if i cut my my uh, breakfast and dinner rations in half and i travel 20 kilometers a day i will make it not something you can do on a loan which is no. a total mind warp right um what what could you what would you think about uh, the alone experience being actually like by yourself as opposed to being out there with two people well, you know, depending on the person you're with, for yeah. one, you know, uh, when I talk about yeah. doing that stone sheep hunt right. up in Tottenham Mountain, there's very few people I would do that hunt with. You right. Know, just because you're in such a you're yeah. confined quarter mm -hmm. and no other outside mm -hmm. influence. So, you know, mm -hmm. the, people get on on nerves. You right. Know? You do. It's true. Sure. Like you got to be able to bounce back from it. Right. You know? uh, me and my brother, mm -hmm. uh, he'd be a great guy. Like mm -hmm. his skills are over the top. Mm -hmm but we might kill each other but you know what i mean uh but yeah. like my buddy aaron stone or my cousin tate him mm -hmm. and i would we'd have no trouble right, you know so right. it, it depends on who you're with yeah that would really but you got to have twice as much food yeah you yeah. know now there is also two guys to get the firewood right right you know so way better way better two guys. right you, you're that's still the other the thing same. they don't show how hard but when i watch you cut 50 pieces of firewood i'm like that is extremely exhausting 60 oh, yeah. days in or whatever or yeah. oh my god you know but yeah that's, that's but it easier. also kept the mind yeah. and the yeah. you know i couldn't be like um um juan pablo there mm -hmm. you know he f laid there and fasted mm -hmm. and just did nothing but walk down and get his water and walk yeah. back up and go there's not a chance yeah. in hell i can yeah. do that like yeah. i just go and what am I doing? Oh, they, here? you may as well stick me in a padded room because that's where I'm going to be going when I get back. You know, right? Like, yeah. Just, but credit to him, he won. He he had right. a plan. He he did his plan, mm -hmm. and I'll never take anything away from him. You know, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. the same. You know, I come back and certain people talk about my arm injury. Right. How many calories that burnt, and what if? And I said. Mm -hmm. I'll never use that as an excuse. Mm -hmm. That is part of the game. That is part of the competition. It was my mistake that caused that injury. Mm -hmm. I'm lucky it didn't take me out instantly. Do you think your background as a hockey player helped you uh, tough through the, the stab in your arm there? My uh, my background as a hockey player it makes you endure a lot. It really you know? does. Like cuts yeah. are like nothing. If you no, play hockey, you're an average person, you're bleeding. Like You don't even notice it. And then someone's like, 
you're bleeding, man. You're like, oh yeah, whatever. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it does help. You it, know? Oh, totally. Yeah. My, I remember my son Andrew there one time, and like he was a totally different kid when he put mm. a hockey helmet on. Like he wouldn't mm. even recognize the kid on the ice right. as the same kid that was going to the schoolyard, right. and. He missed a shift. I, yeah. I'd seen him take a dirty smack and go down and mm -hmm. what have you. And he goes over to the bench and mm -hmm. he missed his next shift. And that's mm -hmm. not like him, you know. And then I see he missed the next one. He's still sitting on the bench. Yeah. I went around and he, hey, bud, what's going on? He says, my shoulder, dad. And I give him a little, yeah. Oh, no. you broke your collarbone. Collarbone, yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah. let's go. Yeah. We went didn't to the hospital. Miss, he you? fractured his, scalp, oh. uh, his shoulder blade, yeah. his scapula. Yeah. And, you know, he sat on the bench for two shifts because right. he's a tough little bastard. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, I, I want to go back out on the right. ice. And that's oh, what yeah. hockey does to you, you know. It does. You see yeah. all those clips, like, with soccer players and stuff and the yeah, white yeah. and it's... hockey players pretending they're not hurt. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, it's like the polar freaking opposite. Yeah. yeah, no, I feel like that helps you just deal with, like, little uh, bits of pain here and there that doesn't oh. make a difference. Also, just kind of being in the bush as well does too, right? Like, exactly. some people would have just been like, oh, I'm injured and, and gotten out of there and and probably the uh the if if they had seen the injury the production crew they might have made it way more big of a deal about it than oh, big it was time. You know it, I mean? and it was like yeah. you know at least to what me and you would consider yeah like i deal. could i could hit that wall like if i went like that i could squirt that wall with pots <laughs> for three or four days it was just like nasty you should have just sat there and squirted it at oh the yeah, it was, yeah it was <laughs> <laughs> and i'll uh, tell you though like yeah. when i pulled that final piece out that yeah. was day 14 yeah. that was three quarters of an inch and i only had two that means my that one that went in there was mm. an inch and a half into my forearm mm. you know and that's quite an impalement that's that's yeah, yeah it, like it took 14 yeah. days for that last three quarters yeah. to work its way out that and yeah. it was just like an orgasm when i pulled it that's wild man yeah, that's but, a, you know it, those yeah. things a lot of that had to yeah. do with my dad and my grandpa yeah. because going hunting white rabbits and yeah. going ice fishing and stuff, I was like three, four, five years old, and they're grown men. Mm. And if you can't suck it up and stay there, you're not going next time. Right, right. So yeah. you don't complain about yeah. it. Your feet are frozen. You're soaking right. wet. Your gloves, you know, back then yeah. we had wool mitts and all the rest of it, and you're yeah. like stuck there with your arms up it. But you never complained because mm. if you did, you didn't go next time. So I think you just touched on what is, in my mind, the best survival skill, which is not giving a fuck, basically. That's right. Learning how you can watch, you can read every survival book, you can watch every YouTube video, you can take all the training courses, but it takes experience to get out there and get used to getting bit by mosquitoes, to get used to just being cold and wet to the point where you don't care. I remember getting a soaker as a kid. I'm like, oh, I have a soaker. Like, do you care now at all? It's like right. nothing. It's yeah. the same sort of thing. And unless you have that real bush time, you know, and I feel like that's a lot of the a lot of the people that have done really well on the show is people that have just had bush time, regardless of what sort of background in the outdoors they have. It's just they've spent a lot of time in the bush. You right. know. Now, are you or Dan older? Uh, me or T Ted, my brother? Or Ted, sorry. Ted, I mean. uh, I'm older. You're older. A little so funnier, Ted, smarter. So Ted, you know. Ted would be the youngest guy that's probably ever won alone, wouldn't he? <sighs> Gee, you know, that's probably true because I think he was 29 or 30 yeah, at the time. Like, eh? As a rule, yeah, yeah. young people don't win. Right. They don't yeah. have the mental fortitude. Right. And I, I'd really like to know yeah. how much of that part was mm -hmm. having someone there enabled you to have the mental fortitude. Yeah. Cause there was a kid, I think his name was Josh or something, he was from Alaska or something on a couple yeah. of years ago. Yeah. Uh, I think it might have been the Labrador season. Right. And the kid was crushing it. He was shooting yeah. all kinds of grouse, shooting all kinds of red squirrels. Yeah. And then one day he just said, I miss my girlfriend and my dog and I want to mm -hmm. go home. Mm hmm. And there was no mm -hmm. other, like, it was not due to um, uh, hardships that he was going home. Mm -hmm. I think it was all just due to his brain. Mm -hmm. And that's what I, I know mm -hmm. what the mental fortitude mm -hmm. was like out there. And mm -hmm. the more mature people are, I mm -hmm. think the better chance they have of dealing with that. Yeah, yeah. So maybe being old, or maybe, you know, that's just what we say because we're old guys and we want to give ourselves some credit, you know what I mean? <laughs> maybe, <laughs> but really. the proof's in the pudding. Yeah, it's true. It's <laughs> yeah. true, man. Uh, I think uh, one of the things I noticed too, it's like you're talking about being out there with two people, injuries. I put an ax through the back of my hand. Right. I could I could stop the bleeding. It was on a pack. I threw the pack off. I put my hand on a rock ledge, threw, pushed the top pack off, and the bit of the axe, the sheath had come out. It's one of those husk fire yeah. axes with just a it only covered the end. Bam, right into my hand. I was up north of Lake Superior, freaking hole this big in my freaking hand, man. It was like 
look real gross. like i showed yeah. my brother i'm like look he's like whoa i'm like dude hold it in a little right yeah. um i was able to help but he was able to pull out bandage but i'm like man if that was in a spot i couldn't reach yeah. and i was by myself it would be an issue but you look at uh, sam and pete who came in in second place right yeah i'm sitting there and i'm watching freaking pete catch fish 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 sam didn't catch one fish he, Pete caught like 45 fish the whole time. And I'm sitting there watching like the final episode with like my mom's friend, who's kind of like this like city person with a Bichon Frise and, and drinks like with one finger sticking out. And she's like, well, I think it's because uh, he has a, a an olive green uh, rain jacket and the other guy has blaze, blaze orange. I'm like, oh my God, she's totally right. I never even caught that. Well, guess what? If if Pete was up by himself, if he could handle it mentally, he would have probably beat my brother and I because he had more food, right? And the army always trains... Um, the army always trains uh, uh, survival in, in groups, but that's more like short term, right? Right. At the end of the day, and one of the things you probably notice too, is that it doesn't matter if you're freaking Rambo. It doesn't matter if you're the best survivalist ever. You cannot manifest calories that can be harvested, no matter how good you are. And, you know? And the fact, like, you take, uh, I forget the guy's name. I think it was season two, um, dude from the U.S. military, mm -hmm. scared shitless of bears. Right. And yeah. he didn't even make the first night. Right. Yeah, he like got, he'd probably do great if people were shooting at him. He probably would have won, right? But you know what I mean. Different, different sports, exactly. you know. Or if you just have somebody with you, or if you have right. a gun, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, yeah. That would, yeah, you don't give all these guys a gun and they mm -hmm. change their whole mental. Mm -hmm. you give them a sharp stick and a string and a you know see how mm -hmm. they do. Right. You know, people say, "Were you scared of bears and wolves?" I'm like, yeah. no, "No, I I didn't put a door on either one of my end yeah. of my shelters for the first two weeks. You right. know, I, was, I watched the sun come up there and I watched the sun." Go down there yeah. and just lay there, you know. Oh, well, those are the glory days, right? Man. You had some. I was like, oh, that weather looks so nice. Some and, of it was, yeah. And yeah. then, <laughs> well, as soon as those geese started yeah. flying, we were yeah. all filming the geese and we we're yeah. talking. Like, it was just day after day after yeah. day. And the, as soon as that wind started heading out yeah. of the Arctic, the geese just jumped on the train and they were getting yeah. the hell out of there. Yeah. And they were a long ways above us, you know. Yeah. yeah. And then and things got crazy. Yeah. October fourth was our first snowfall. They yeah. dropped us off September 15th. So we were there 19 days when it snowed. But the four days previous to that, um, my water had froze, mm -hmm. you know, a skim on everything. I remember you saying, oh, it's almost a, a remembrance day. I'm like, this isn't even past deer season where I'm from. And I was thinking it was like freaking late December or some shit there almost, eh? Like that's, yeah, that's, it's north. I've been yeah. up in that country before. Not, was, there isn't really a lot of game there, by the way. No. There's not a lot of moose there, are in, and there's woodland caribou, which the migratory, we shoot. which you weren't allowed to shoot, and then the migratory caribou, which all got shot off, killed off in the fur trade area. Why yeah. it's called Reindeer Lake because they were they were harvesting those out of brochet to, to feed the uh, voyageurs and the Orkney men and York boats after they yeah. wiped out the bison. But um, there still are probably barren land caribou that come down there. But we're talking about when the lakes froze and in, in the winter. Yeah, you know what I mean. So there's. There's not a ton and of that, uh, of of big game in that area, man. No, it, yeah. and you know, there's like Luke had those bears, yeah, and like Alan or Cade, yeah. Or there's bears son. that there's a decent population of bears, but like that's it. And there, well, you the know? moose population decent in areas. Is it? Yeah. And, okay. and the natives yeah. I was talking to said yeah. where I was yeah. more of a wintering area, and I knew right. that. I figured that out. Mm -hmm. I called moose every night mm -hmm. that was calm, every morning that was calm. Mm -hmm. I walked every point around my area. Mm -hmm. And there were some spots, man. I've called moose ever since I can remember. Mm -hmm. And I had called just singing down the lake. And mm -hmm. I'm just waiting. I'm figuring for sure. That was my whole game plan was to shoot a moose up there. And I, well, I obviously. Yeah. And uh, Christ, uh, I, like to tell me that I could go there and not call, I just couldn't believe it. But oh, wow. Uh, were you you were definitely in the rut what time of year did you get september in september 15th was our oh, drop yeah. date uh, yeah, yeah perfect time perfect time oh, and you know the uh it was just and 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 i we were at camp yeah we both got up at, in the morning uh we were out having a leak at the same time it's still dark everyone else is in there and i said oh looks like we got the same uh biological alarm there andrew yeah yeah <laughs> I said, I'm going to walk down and see if I can call a moose. She says, I don't know how to call a moose. You mind? Yeah, I said, yeah. no, come on down, man. And I give a call from camp. Mm. And sure as shit, there's a bull answer. I go, you hear that? Cool. She goes, is that a moose? I said, yeah, yeah that was a yeah, bull. Yeah. And I give so another. Fun. And then all of a sudden, you can hear, 
goes, he's in the water. I said, yeah, he might come right across. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, it was exciting. You got to be careful when you're call, starting to call moose. I remember I was showing off to my wife one time. I'm like, hey, look at this, honey. And I'm throwing this call. And we wait, nothing. We walk down the trail, come back. We got our, we're carrying our little kids with us. Big bull right in the middle of the trail. You know how they can be aggressive, eh? Oh, yeah. But uh, but it, it didn't like my dog, and it took off. So right. the dog the dog said, "I've us. never I've never yeah. really had any issues with them being like aggressive to the point yeah. where I'd worry about them." I've heard it. I've heard some a couple. I've heard one bad story, but I've never experienced it. Yeah, either. like the first yeah. bull I ever shot was at thirteen yards, and mm. I was dressed in all black. I've mm. got my bow up on my head like this, and mm. I'm calling. I want. I called him across a wide open mm. marsh for 150 yards cool. and he's coming in and he's got yeah. the snot oh, running man. down the nose. Nothing, and the, the best, the best. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, but yeah. at no point did I feel threatened with that bull. Right. You know what I mean? Even though he was being a bull uh -huh. and being, you know, and he'd give a call and rake a tree in the swamp and yeah. I'd give a little paddle and stand up and grunt and he'd just wah, and he'd come running 20 yards and he'd mm -hmm. stop another tree and, mm -hmm. and i mm -hmm. just do the same thing back and he'd do this until the next thing you know he's at 13 yards mm -hmm. and i'd quill them through the lungs and they're like mm -hmm. but that is the mm -hmm. most exhilarating hunt yeah that i i i've only shot three moose with a bow mm -hmm. but only they are and my buddy aaron uh aaron stone the first moose we ever got as a group uh i was calling got him coming in just a nice you know 35 inch bull or something like that uh you know and he was coming in i've got him at full draw at 10 yards away mm -hmm. but he's standing facing me like this and aaron's just over my right hand shoulder type thing mm -hmm. and he's only a few yards away from me mm -hmm. and i've got mm -hmm. a black spruce right in front of me i can't mm -hmm. shoot this damn thing and yeah. i'm holding it full draw and it seemed like an eternity yeah and then he kind of just turns a bit and i still got no shot and I, all of a sudden i hear shoot <laughs> and he bolts and i let yeah. go because i know he's yeah and he goes i go you better hit him man you yeah right there right yeah. right there and i go yeah. right on i said i yeah. think i touched him too he goes oh no way you touched him i said i think i hit him bud nice. and, goes, yeah. and where were you we were time? in uh that one was horn paint oh okay yeah, yeah. and a uh, great moose hunting area yeah. but it got so hard to get a tag it was ridiculous mm -hmm. he comes up and he goes oh look at the blood on that arrow buddy and i go mm -hmm. that's my arrow bud <laughs> he goes holy shit that is your hair <laughs> you know? yeah but we went and he had laid a perfect yeah. he had just hit that thing so perfect and uh that was a that was a chore that one was a 1.2 uh kilometer quarter oh, wow. carry wow. yeah and he you, had a fucked up you, back, you so. plan for it though right oh, you that's plan it, you for know? these pack outs right that's it you know yeah, I, it would have been hard on alone when you're to get one if you're if you did venture far from camp you know, and you got one when you're starting to get weaker. It's almost like, would you just set up next to the moose and Probably. just start eating it until you had your energy and then take or, it back? you know, you yeah. know, that's the thing. If it was late enough, yeah, I just get it high enough in a tree mm -hmm. that, you know, put the four quarters up in the trees, right. carry what I can back, take all, mm -hmm. you know, the, the prime stuff, the tongue mm -hmm. and all the organs and what have you, the first shot, man, right. with the fat on it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then worry about the rest. I was yeah. more worried about shooting one early when it was warm. Right. And yeah. how the hell am I going to get all this smoke? And I said, yeah. the water temperature was cold enough. Yeah. I was just going to put it on a big piece of paracord and fire it out in 20 feet right. of water. Yeah. You know, there was enough deep drop loss right there. And, you know, they talked about fishing and Alan mm -hmm. and I, that was one of the biggest advantages. Mikey made gorgeous lures. Uh -huh. Like the lures he made, but he was, he was from shallow. Georgia. Oh. You know, he's, ne he's yeah. fishing catfish and, right. and sunfish and, yeah. and bluegills or whatever and yeah. largemouth bass yeah he's never seen a pike he's never seen a lake trout he's never, never seen a white the fish. canadian shield no yeah and this is like our dream right. like, to go and fish reindeer it's like exactly what we have to work way harder to do to then just go there and you know what i mean exactly. and have you know it's like and if you notice practice. alan and i we'd fire yeah. our lures out and we'd mm. wait yeah, we let him sink and get right. down into that zone where right. where do you Mike, count. Do you count to three? You count to four or ten? Yeah. You know, yeah. and you know, letting it get and no wonder you snagged on bottom a couple of times. Yep. And yeah. you know, you had to get down there because yeah. otherwise you were getting up. Right. And it was weird because, and I know why my him and I talked about it, they were surfacing everywhere. Like on mm. every calm night, it was just splash, 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 splash. Mm. Like the lake was just bubbling with fish, mm -hmm. and you know, 
uh, but he just didn't know how to make those lures and how to get down. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he had the right shapes, the right mm -hmm. sizes, all the rest of it. Yeah. He just wasn't getting to the target zone of where the fish were. And yeah. Alan and I had that advantage. Yeah. One of the things I, uh, was a challenge for me was it was only, it was very shallow where I was fishing. So once it got colder, the fish were retreating to deeper water. Right. And I was just catching these like just dinks like you know i'd be like yeah i'd be like nothing like you guys are catching we did get into some like that earlier on but then the problem was the, the tides had to be right for me to actually even access an area where you could fish right so when the tide was like too low it was like two feet deep you couldn't get out any deeper and then that when the tide was in the waves are crashing up into this thicket of bushes and a cliff and i remember one time man there's this there's this uh whole school of sable fish every time we'd hear we'd hear or 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 the sea lions and seals out there and then that would trigger us oh the sable fish are coming back for whatever reason they just swim around this freaking bay we were in like a tornado and i'd run out there and i'd throw my freaking line in and i would catch catch two i had two hooks on i catch two faster than like as fast as i could rebate it the problem was i wasn't rebating it fast enough right but then it would be over Right. You know what I mean? So, and they weren't near as big as, as the ones you caught, but you could just eat the bones and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, oh man, that was fun. But I remember one time I'm on them, I'm on them and I'm like getting pushed back into the freaking <laughs> trees and the tides coming in. And I'm like, oh, I just had to like bail and I caught, managed to catch 18 of them. You know what I mean? And, right. you know, which was just, and there's, oh, you know how good the food tastes. Oh, and, yeah. You know, yeah. Hunger oh, is yeah. the best Ever. seasoning, right? Oh, God. Yeah. That <laughs> first fish I got, you know, when I did my happy dance and stuff yeah. there, you know. I'm a big guy and I eat three squares a day and mm. I hadn't eaten in four full days. This is day five. So yeah. when I seen that white belly at that gill yeah. I those were true emotions. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> you yeah. know, it, yeah. oh, that fish. I, I'll, I'll never forget the first taste of that fish. Yeah. Like it was just yeah. incredible. Incredible. Eh? Yeah. It yeah. Was. And yeah. it, you know, it, it's at those moments mm. that justify your existence of being mm. there and give you that, boost of confidence you know once i got that first mm -hmm. fish mm -hmm. you know it was kind of like there was no looking back mm -hmm. you know it was like okay mm -hmm. we can do this yeah and you know okay it might take four or five days mm -hmm. and, you know that's losing those two fish in that live well that cost mm -hmm. me four days mm -hmm. i didn't eat for four days because of that mistake mm -hmm. you know never uh, made it again uh, would i do it four again days no i wouldn't because no. you know even yeah. though i watched someone else make yeah. that mistake i thought my luck was better than that but it's like do you prepare for these rogue otters to cut like you could have probably uh, let's say essentially you could have left the fish there 10, 20 times in a row. Yep. Maybe you just got unlucky. Do you plan for, you know, uh, the one to one in 20, one in 50 time every night? I think maybe the answer is you do. That's yeah. kind of, well, my, you, have you know, to. Yeah, yeah, you have to, you know, and uh, it, once they've done it once, mm -hmm. they're, oh, coming, they're, 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 they're not dumb. No, they're yeah. coming every day, yeah. you yeah. know, and yeah. that's how I got the, the couple yeah. Martins I got. Was, right. They were coming around and like yeah. once they started coming around, it was just every day. And it was yeah. like, OK, they're habituated. we'll figure you out. And they, they start training you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, they I just yeah. stick the red squirrel guts out there and right. it wasn't long. They were coming along. Oh, free meal. Well, yeah. here's an arrow for you. Too. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Did you try eating them? Oh, you ate them? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they yeah, were yeah. delicious. And I've never eaten a weasel. You hear bad things about eating weasels. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe how good they tasted. Yeah. And like a couple of the old travers, Len Locke, and that, that taught me how to trap and yeah. what have you. They're going, you ate a goddamn Martin? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I said they were good. Oh, yeah. you were fucking starving. I thought the same thing. I know people that eat them too all the time uh, up near, uh, like they're the only trappers i ever known to eat them. But they eat otters, martins, yep. uh, fishers. Lynx you know? are like yeah. Your lynx are just good. Yeah. 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 And, you know, you think yeah. about a cat and yeah. it's like, nah, but yeah. apparently the mountain lions are delicious too. I've, so I've heard. So yeah. I've heard. I also like a lot of, I'm, I'm pretty easy to please, which was great. I, I noticed you on your season and, and due to, you know, your skills and abilities too, as well, you seem to have more yummy food on average than I did. Like I'm eating tons of things, but I'm eating like limpets and the sea stuff and these gunnel fish, which were fish. But, you know, I had to like stomp on them and stand. They, you know, they're just yeah. looked like writhing eels, you know, 
like you're not seeing that on any like menus at any restaurants. Right. I'll tell you that much right now. You know what I mean? Um, so I, I thought, man, these guys are, these guys are doing well. They're eating good. One thing that would have been great. And you probably would have had beaver. I don't see any beaver. Dams. There were none. Were there none? Were you allowed to get beaver? Yeah. Oh, I was oh. looking for it. I, uh, and yeah, like me being because they're so fatty. But when once it freezes, oh, well, you know how to trap beavers. Yeah, yeah. and that's it. And yeah. I, I had no worries about shooting one. You right. know, and uh, you know, guys going on, and I just I had no fear of that. Yeah. And uh, if I had a found a beaver, yeah, it's only mean, a matter of time yeah, that I'm going to yeah. figure out where to get it. Right. You know. Right. Yeah. They. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's uh, uh, Benjamin, the guy who shot the beaver. Uh, oh, I didn't. On uh, season nine or oh, okay. season eight, whichever I, I think it was. I saw that, yeah. And he's skinning it. He got yeah. sick. And when he was flashing uh, out the skin of the beaver, huh. he's putting all the fat and stuff on the tail. Huh. And he hadn't skinned out the tail and stuff yet. Huh. Well, yeah. the tail is the most disgusting part on a beaver. Right. It's the dirtiest part. They actually shit on their tail right. and eat it. Right, and that's uh, because all they eat is bark and wood, mm -hmm. and the odd grass and stuff. No wonder but, these things can survive so well. They just eat their own shit and thrive out there. Well, they need to for the yeah. digestion, right? And, and because of that, their tail mm. and they're carrying all the mud that they're building their dams and all mm -hmm. the stuff that they gather on. The tail is the dirtiest part of the beaver, mm. and here he was putting using as a table, right? Ah, see, and I, yeah, think, I wouldn't have known that. I think yeah. that's his biggest mistake, right? I, yeah. I can't swear to it. Uh -huh. That because I haven't I haven't spoke to the man, right? But right. I would say that that is what caused him to have that bacterial illness. Yeah, yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah that's something you got to be careful out there. I never, I guess I've been lucky. I've never really had any sicknesses and stuff. One time, I think from just drinking a lot of swamp water, I did. Yeah. But uh, fortunately, I was uh, fortunately, unfortunately, I was traveling up to James Bay from about Cochrane, and I was I thought that I was going to be going paddling through a beaver swamp which the map showed and the notes from the last yeah. guy did show. Well, there was no dam there anymore. So I was just like hauling up this narrow stream, like over logs mud. But because of the beaver meadow, there's freaking uh, uh, wild mint everywhere. Oh, nice. So I was literally, it, and, and like it works. It lasts for about half an hour. So you just eat a bunch of what you have that jarty yeah. at your stomach oh, like this pound a bunch of wild mint. You're good. Then it comes back, pound a bunch of wild mint. And I could just eat it as I went along, almost like a bear, you cruise nice. along yeah. eating berries. Yeah. And then, and then it, I was able to pass it. I don't know if that's from the yeah. wild mint or not, but I've had, I've been pretty lucky for the most part, you know, and not getting sick out there, but I, it happens, you know? Yeah. I, you yeah. know, and I get, I, I grew up where you yeah. eat everything. Um, right, right. And, uh, you know, I, I probably ate some things that most people would mm. never eat. Uh, yeah. And I ate a barn swallow once. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I was in the boathouse, you know, you're going to yeah. shoot it. You got to eat it. Right. I, I mean, I think there maybe are, uh, are, are exceptions to that rule. But, well, yeah. you know, I, yeah. I I won't mention any names, but there was somebody that shot a couple uh, small birds on the show mm -hmm. and ate mm -hmm. them. And I. You know, we weren't allowed to shoot. I was fucking starving. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Camera was off. Yeah, man. yeah. <laughs> you know, whatever. And yeah. you know, that's where guys like Alan, yeah, the integrity of that man. Yeah, you know that duck that he released. Right. Yeah, that Martin he released. Yeah, uh, I can't say I would have done that. Right. Um, yeah, I would now. Right. After talking with him, learning, mm -hmm. you know, um, and understanding the true nature of fair competition is fair chase mm -hmm. i i do it with my hunting i'm mm -hmm. a full like fair chase hunter mm -hmm. um and that competition should be and alan is the type of man that showed that integrity mm -hmm. and he showed it to all his students and everybody mm -hmm. who watched uh and he's mm -hmm. he's every bit as uh great a man as that mm. show portrayed him to good be. yeah yeah, yeah. No, and, I, and yeah he also did it in such a way that uh you know he wasn't being like overly um soft or sensitive about it i don't know if i no, want to use those no, words no, but you was, know some people might be a little bit too like bunny hugger about the whole thing yeah. but where he was he was uh he just he just had a perfect sweet spot you know yeah he yeah. and he is like he is a hunter right you know he yeah. he's what <laughs> he's second place twice in the national bc archery competition like wow. the guy can shoot a bow yeah and cade mm -hmm. 
I would say he's better than Alan and me combined, you know, like what, at archery. At archery like so that. how much, like I wanted to ask you, oh, do you, so you grew up or you did a lot of archery shooting, but yep. how much did you practice before heading out there? Were, were you always that good? Because I didn't see you miss anything. No, well I did. Yeah, uh, well, well yeah. it didn't make the cut. I, yeah, no, they didn't make, but I did shoot a lot. You okay, know, like yeah. by the time I left there, there was not yeah. a goddamn grouse or a red right. squirrel or anything left in my area. You right. couldn't find a track. I'd killed everything. Right, right. Uh, you know, yeah. um, so, but I did miss. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've always shot my brother. Yeah. The, the guy, he's an incredible shot. Like, I'll never be the shot mm. my brother is. But right. we used to always, uh, my brother, I can remember we had one of the old sack uh, K, uh, targets one time, and mm -hmm. he painted a dartboard on it. Mm -hmm. and we go play darts with the bow and arrows cool. and you know my buddy aaron chris spires jeff spires joe uh we all shot bows mm -hmm. and because they were quiet and mm -hmm. all that we could just go every evening and mm -hmm. instead of playing darts or playing pool or whatever mm -hmm. we played we had dart uh, awesome. archery competitions awesome. in our own you know yeah uh well, what kid doesn't want to be like Robin Hood? Exactly, want to, right? Doesn't love like bow and arrows, right? Yeah. It's just that some people kind of give it up and some people don't, right? I feel exactly. Like, yeah. My yeah. Uh, my youngest son, Evan, mm -hmm. uh, he's the one who got me big into shooting the recurves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, he's a wicked little shot. And, mm -hmm. You know, uh, this, and now I'm going to go to the longbow. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's mm -hmm. just kind of, I'm working, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm regressing backwards. And right. I'm becoming more and more primitive. Next thing it's going to be in that ladle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, you know. <laughs> I, I'd love yeah. to try one, just yeah, to, you yeah. know. I'm uh, sure I'd blow it uh, the first oh, few yeah. times. I, but, I, you know, I'd probably yeah. blow my shoulder out. Probably, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know, I, I love all that stuff. It's the yeah. same, you know, what, like Cade. Mm -hmm. like say, he'd shoot from all these... We had cool. a practice site out there, and holy yeah. shit, man, that boy yeah. can shoot. Wow. So how important do you think was uh, your archery ability at, at doing as well as you did on the show in the end? Did you get a lot of calories from that? No. no I, no. I burnt more than I. But yeah. Mentally? It helped mentally. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And it did other things. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't specifically just go hunting. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a route where I would my snares i only mm -hmm. snared one red squirrel I, yeah. those little pricks got onto it once i snared that one red squirrel yeah i was watching the other ones they'd come and they'd jump like i would have them on deadfall logs that were coming down i watched yeah. them literally jump over my snares no they, they just caught onto that oh man and they'd hear me yeah. it got to the point where they knew i was coming through the bush and you'd mm -hmm. hear them and they'd all be talking back and forth and they, they didn't realize they're the giving guy, themselves the away though and i was going uh, okay <laughs> little bastard yeah. go over there and wait yeah. and i just sit and wait and yeah. then he'd come out and yeah. it's like okay i would just watch him yeah. wouldn't even let him know and then i wait for him to go up that one tree where yeah. i knew he wasn't getting away from and i'd head over there and yeah uh, squirrel hunting is fun it is right yeah it's fun as hell yeah yeah and those red squirrels they don't taste as bad as everyone says no i couldn't yeah. believe how good they yeah. tasted i was yeah. like what the hell is everyone talking about yeah yeah that's the same i didn't eat one for years and one time me and a buddy were super hungry and we're like you want to get this squirrel he's like oh i hear they taste bad you ever tried one well no next thing you know like it's pretty good right he still was hungry afterwards because yeah, oh, yeah. he ate much food but you know i was taking them mm -hmm. and i would boil I, i'd roast them mm-hmm and when they were all roast, uh, head on, eyeballs, everything, you know, yeah. I just, you know, and I'd roast them over my smoker mm -hmm. and then I'd cut them into quarters type thing and I'd throw them in my soup pot and I'd throw a handful of lingonberries, a handful of crowberries, a handful of bearberries, a handful of blueberries, whatever mm -hmm. berries I was had in my bucket. I just carried mm -hmm. a bucket and I was filling it with all four kinds that we could find out there and didn't mm -hmm. care, you know, and uh, I'd throw a handful of those in chop up some of the bolete or hedgehog mushrooms I'd found, throw that in, mm. and then that nice white fluffy ash that you get from your fire. Yeah. Tell me about that ash, man. It's a, not, yeah. it's an old indigenous thing. Many, Didn't many native cultures use uh -huh. it. It creates, it gives you potassium okay. and different yeah. minerals in your body. Yeah. And it, it's an amazing flavoring. It, yeah. It's just, and I take like yeah. a big handful yeah. of it, just fire it right in my soup no pot. Shit. And yeah. that soup was, and I'll tell you when mm. it got cold, yeah coming back and after splitting firewood yeah. and doing all your daily routine mm -hmm. and sitting there and just having that comfort of mm -hmm. that warmth and it was the same waking up in the morning mm -hmm. i'd uh, i'd i would take a handful of berries throw them in my pot bring it to a boil mm -hmm. and have a berry tea mm -hmm. and, and i would just 
drink that and at the when it was done i'd just mm. eat all the berries right and then at night i'd have labrador tea yeah yeah good stuff eh? oh i loved it yeah yeah mm. it, 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 you know and i didn't mind the spruce tip tea mm. and all that too i guess there'd be no cedar up there we me and Very my brother little. were, there were was drinking yawn. cedar and man did it ever hit the spot sometimes yeah. you yeah. know but that Labrador tea, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, that's yeah. good stuff. I picked a bunch of it while I was up north uh, moose hunting this year mm. and brought it home and dried it out. Yeah. It stains the water so quickly too, doesn't it? Like you can just tell it's working. I don't know. It was always yeah. dark when I, I, I didn't mm. even look at it. I no. just, oh, okay. you know, <laughs> I, it was dark yeah. every time yeah. I drank it. So I don't even know what it looked like. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, it looks like greeny, greenish tea, I guess. It, st- it stains mm-hmm. it more green. Yeah, I was yeah. using, I was mixing it with the, um, with mm. the black spruce needle when i was uh mm-hmm. cleaning my wound yeah and i don't know how much the labrador tea helped but yeah. i was told it would uh-huh. uh, you know but i knew that and because i'd cut all that black spruce that fresh yeah. pitch that was oozing out of it was at its peak of anti antiseptic properties mm-hmm. so i did lather that right yeah on. and do you think if you didn't have that sort of bush first aid knowledge of making the the antiseptic tea out of uh, out of the Labrador tea and spruce tips, right? Is yep. what you made out of. And if you didn't know about using uh, spruce resin, do you think that you would have it would have become a much more of a Guaranteed. serious issue? Yeah. Guaranteed. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like you're. Uh, everything's dirty out there mm-hmm. you know like you can't help it your hands are dirty mm-hmm. you're cleaning fish you're cleaning squirrels you're cleaning grouse you know yeah. everything else you're you know uh so you've got no soap yeah. you know so you're cleaning the best you can right you know uh i swam up i went swimming virtually every day till october 10th oh nice and wow. october 10th it's i ballsy. said yeah yeah. Uh, that was the first scene I yeah. the, I walk out bare ass naked and go for a swim and that's why I said it's going to be called the bleep and blur season because I swear a lot and I love being naked and I ran around naked all the time you know yeah. and I that's just me and uh, yeah. you know uh, I remember I was sitting down at Chuck's Roadhouse because we were doing a thing a donation thing for the yeah. food bank there and if you were going to watch me starve on television why don't you help the local food bank to bring a donation it's a good I, hook yeah yeah so the, you know it was great we raised like 500 pounds of food or something it wow. was pretty cool and uh mm-hmm. but we're sitting at Chuck's my wife and my two kids and a bunch of our friends and everybody's sitting around and First scene there, I walk out naked and the whole place just erupts with laughter. <laughs> my phone just started going, zzz, 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 yeah, zzz, yeah. my nieces and nephews, I'm yeah. quiet. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. But it was a blast. You know? What are you going to do? Soak a pair of your boxers? Like, no, you exactly. know, I mean, it'd be stupid, right? right? I, I, yeah. And it's one of those things, you know. Uh, we live in a world where we teach people to be ashamed of their body. Mm hmm. And that's so wrong. Right. Uh, you know, um, I won't mention any names, but one of the guys that was on the show, he was talking about uh, dating this girl from Sweden. Mm-hmm. And when he was in university, and he went over to Sweden, mm-hmm. and they had dinner and all the rest of it. And after dinner, they went to the sauna. Mm-hmm. And her sister and her brother and her mother and her father and her grandparents, and her mm-hmm. they all peeled off their clothes completely mm-hmm. naked. And got in the sauna. Well, that's that's how they roll in Sweden, and right? Shit, man, and lots know? of other places. Yeah, yeah. And France he's like, and stuff. Oh my god! Yeah. Like what? And yeah. Yeah. he's almost kind of. And she goes, "This is weird. Why yeah. would you think it's these people have seen me naked since the day I was born? Right? You, why do you think I should feel shame about right. being naked in front of the people I love the most? Ah, uh, it's so right? true, isn't it? Right. And, yeah. But we breed that in, in Western. Not culture. to say I'm about to jump into that culture. No, no. But you know, but, but it's one of those things yeah. where. Mm-hmm. we should never mm-hmm. you know yeah. teach our kids or yeah. anybody else right to be ashamed of what we are yeah. because if you're not yourself who yeah. the fuck are you maybe another thing you learn from competitive sports hey eh? you got to shower after the game you just right? fucking get over it so you don't want to stink like hockey equipment well you know, I, you know <laughs> I, and you you'd get ridiculed far more for being a stinky bastard right. than you would yeah. for having a small dick or whatever <laughs> right. you know? nobody like, nobody because then it's like what are you looking at my dick for right, bud? Exactly. right so nobody says anything right yeah i know yeah. and yeah. It, you know it, that's something we breed into people and we shouldn't mm-hmm. we we should go the other way you know mm-hmm. all down through you know yeah. europe and that they have nude beaches and mm-hmm. stuff and and we grow up with that mindset mm-hmm. of not worrying about it you know right. here a girl yeah. is worried whether she shaves her armpits or not right whereas in right. germany and sweden and stuff yeah. they don't do it at all 
Right. You know, I, you know, yeah. Living in a society where women go topless more often. Why does anyone have an issue with that? You know what I mean? That's right. You it, know, it, it, it's, and guys do it all the time, right? right just, and you just know, how you, it is. you take all those yeah. cultures that yeah. do not have the um, yeah. negativity and animosity towards mm. nudity and, and being naked, mm. also have no sexual assaults. They mm. don't have the predators. Right? Interesting. Right? And we've got, you look at the Maybe world. Maybe you could just go crush naked and afraid as your next series. Away but I'm not afraid of nothing. <laughs> 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 it would just be naked and naked. That's right. Nothing. Yeah, we should just go smash that show. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. Yeah, it's it's so true, though. It's like it's such your, your sort of natural state, and especially when you're in the bush and you're trying to get back to nature, you know, who cares? You know? Exactly. You know, yeah, and yeah. Like, being out there and mm. just – breathing you mm -hmm. know it's like sitting by a fire i don't know if a lot of people do it you know it's, you talk about uh cleaning mm -hmm. there's nothing more clean than a smoke bath mm -hmm. and indigenous people use it forever and mm -hmm. i do it for all you know these guys go out and they spend all kinds of money mm -hmm. scent free stuff and they're hunting stuff and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Smoke. Go grab yourself a great big pile of balsam mm -hmm. or a great big pile of cedar mm -hmm. and get yourself a fire going mm -hmm. and stand there and give yourself a complete smoke bath, mm -hmm. smoke all your clothes, all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. You'll have no trouble. Yeah, or now you can buy the pucks that smell like smoke. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. It's like, what's the point? Charcoal's yeah. been a great deodorizer forever. Ah, do you use that when you're hunting? Yep. Yeah, what do you do with it? I I, I just take it and I put it in my boots. Mm -hmm. You know, that I. Uh, Use, I used it for brushing my teeth out mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. use it for washing your hands, your face, mm -hmm. whichever. So when you put charcoal in your boots, you just like uh, crush up, put it in, and then shake it around and dump it yeah, out? Yeah, well, you, you know what a hot shot is? Or, uh, a hot, no. you know, those little heat pads? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all there is charcoal. Oh, no kidding. What right? keeps them it's going a, hot? It's a some kind of active that they put in it, and mm -hmm. I don't. It, but it's a charcoal base. Mm. So if you take charcoal and you grind it all up, yeah, and you put it on the, underneath your uh, soles or whatever, mm -hmm. it works as an antiperspirant as a natural. Mm. You know, uh, great tip. Yeah, yeah. there, uh, guys. You know, guys have been using charcoal for uh, mm -hmm. putting in uh, fans and stuff for mm. uh, growing weed rooms and stuff. They use it, they use it as uh, to kill the centers oh, no on their exhaust. Just so people don't bust charcoal them. Charcoal filters are yeah. common in all kinds yeah. of places, well, right? and also for uh, for filtering water too. Right yeah yeah interesting yeah, yeah natural good. purifier i'm loving that learning a few uh outdoor tips here, yeah man. well i'll tell you uh, guys used to talk about having a fire yeah. when they're out deer hunting mm -hmm. they go oh you can't i've had deer walk right up mm -hmm. within 20 yards of me yeah. at a fire as long as you're not moving right and making a bunch of noise yeah you think about living up here in the muskokas and all yeah. the rest of it how many wood fires are burning in every house around? Not to mention forest fires that exactly. happen sometimes it's from and miles and miles away, right? It's that a aren't common any threat smell. to them. Yeah. And that's the thing, like deer and moose and bears and stuff, they aren't worried about smells they don't know. They worry about threatening smells. Mm -hmm. You know, there's guys right. that'll talk about uh, yeah. vegetarians mm -hmm. and vegans, how animals walk right up to them. Mm -hmm. Because a vegetarian does not threat we put off a smell as a carnivore or an yeah. omnivore that yeah. herbivores huh. can sense wow they know to avoid carnivores that's wild omnivores that's wild. Yeah. vegetarians yeah. doesn't bother them at all yeah sounds like something that maybe has uh we might one of those things we might not understand everything about you know yeah right? we yeah. we always do it you yeah. know uh, vanilla is another one works as a great uh, vanilla? scent cover oh, yeah cool yeah. we used to when we raise rabbits mm -hmm. and you'd have a, a mother rabbit, if, mm -hmm. if you take her out to handle the babies, you just put a drop of vanilla on her nose and she couldn't smell you touch the babies. Because oh, okay. if she could smell you touch the babies, she'd kill them all. Oh, yeah. So rabbits, eh? Hey, just baby killers. Yeah, they are. They're yeah. terrible for it. Any rabbits out there? I didn't see many. Not. we. Yeah. It was funny because we never seen a track. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet at camp, when mm -hmm. we were staying at Arctic Lodges, there was right. rabbits running around everywhere. We were going, oh, man. We are going to be loading in. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, said, I forget who it was. It was somebody that from season two, I think they said, you know, you head out there with plan A, and a lot of time you end on like plan D or whatever. Yeah. Right? Is there anything that you learned about survival that was uh that you weren't expecting to learn or aha uh -huh, what it what it's really all about compared to what the books make it seem like it is one of the things was the importance of sodium uh, yeah. the thing that really took me out was the dehydration mm -hmm. um my body started breaking down mm -hmm. alan and i both had the same problem mm -hmm. he was we both had 
orange orange urine by the time mm. we left and it was our tissue and muscles mm. breaking down because you can't retain water without a certain amount of salt exactly yeah and i had studied um colt's foot and mm. different aquatic plants and that's why we had no moose and deer and bears or caribou out there in our area because there was none of those plants with the sodium ah, they needed as much as we do right. that's why they come the mineral licks and all the rest 100%. of it salt licks and what that side you. of the highway exactly mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so out there where there's no highways and there's no mm -hmm. you know human uh involvement they have to source it naturally mm -hmm. and plants like colt's foot and different aquatic plants and stuff yeah. they have that right that's why the moose weren't in our area yeah. because we had none of that yeah. That's why the beavers weren't in our area because we had none of that. Right. You know, it, everything needs. And mm. that was the one thing we were lacking. And that's why Luke took salt and numerous yeah. other people over yeah. the years have taken salt. And what was that? What was the plants that you said that came? Uh, Colt's foot. Colt's foot. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. one of the common ones. It's aquatic? And, uh, no, it, it grows on land. Okay. Yeah. Um, but a lot of your tubers and rhizomes from mm. your different uh, bulrushes and okay. lily pads. and You ever uh, eaten uh, lily pad tubers before? Uh, I haven't. Uh, like duck potatoes. They go. Well, they? The, the ones that duck potatoes, those are pretty good. The ones that are like from the arrowheads. Yeah. But the arrowheads, I forget which ones. It's the arrowheads that are more curved in. Mm -hmm. Those ones where you can pull it up and it's at the bottom. But it's the, uh, the straight up lily pad tubers. I, I read about it and everything. Yeah. I tried them on a loan. I think it's one of those things you have to boil and dump the water out like boil 20 times. Water, yeah. I did it like three times and I almost, I almost barfed. Like I right? still gone down. I didn't, you yeah, know, yeah. but I was just like, Oh God. Right. Not pleasant. The duck potatoes, they go mm. around and they actually would walk in the shallows and pop them off with their toes. Okay. They feel yeah. them and then they float. And then oh, they go okay. and pick them all up. Okay, so maybe it. this is a, so the ones I'm talking about might be a little bit different than because um, they were they, they're a little bit deeper into the mud that uh -huh. are at the bottom of the arrowheads. Right. What do, what does the the top of the duck potato plant look like? Uh, it's an arrowhead. Is it plant. okay? Yeah, okay. And, yeah. But you you know they're going yeah. around in the mud yeah. and they feel them with their toes ah. and then they pop them off with their nice. toes yeah. and then they come around and pick them all up. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, they. Uh, yeah. I, it's funny because. Half these plants, mm -hmm. I studied my ass off to go right. out there. And I, I was showing different things about the book mm -hmm. and all the pages that I had because mm -hmm. I only studied the plants for that area. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what it's like when I was talking about the mushrooms and stuff and sticking a piece under. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, how do we want to say it? Um, manipulation to the story, mm -hmm. if we want to say, mm -hmm. uh, by the production crew on mm -hmm. that. But yeah. it was still, Mm -hmm. kind of for fun and mm -hmm. i what just to make it look more dangerous yeah. maybe or just yeah probably yeah. just so people were scared so they didn't run out and start pounding mushrooms yeah and, and i die. gave some kind of maybe bad advice yeah, and, yeah. Or, you know not mm -hmm. good advice that's right. for sure and yeah. i was 99 percent sure yeah. that that was a hedgehog mushroom right but i never held one in my hand yeah Right, and I i go mushroom foraging all the time right but i'm familiar with all the ones that i have around here mm -hmm. and i had never seen that type of mushroom mm -hmm. And there was like a five pound bunch of them. Like oh, they were man. great big. And I'm like, yeah. I, and I'm looking at them. It's like, tricky with mushrooms because sometimes they taste good even if they're not good. Well, and uh, yeah. that's it. And some, you know, sometimes the mice yeah. and squirrels can eat them and we can't. Yeah. But I, I've never come across one. Yeah. I know it's not, I know that there's some that we can eat mm -hmm. or that they can eat and it'll, screw right, our livers right. and it's a pretty it's 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 a lot better than not having that to go off of, right and you know yeah. like i said i was 99.9 percent mm. sure but i'm going by memory of something right. i've read in a book instead yeah. of something you know yeah and that was a good amount of mushrooms like at that point i could see how excited you would have been to oh, eat yeah. those and plus you got two partridges and a squirrel i think maybe at least that, yeah maybe two well, partridges that, that day that day i got yeah. two i got two spruce grouse yeah that day was just incredible like mm -hmm. i woke up knowing that day was going to be different i could mm -hmm. feel it, it right was just, you know that like, was the day that you you lost your lure earlier on though that wasn't was, it yeah that was yes that was actually yeah. funny as hell because yeah. I woke up, I talk about it all yeah. on the camera, how this day is going to be better. And I mm. go down and I cast and I get like six to seven pound lake trout, beauty mm. lake trout. Amazing. Get him in. And yeah. they didn't show up, but I go up the camera and I've got yeah. lure and I'm like bragging. I'm going, hey, if you're coming to Reindeer <laughs> Lake and you want a lure that we know works, yeah. if you talk nice, I might make you one. If right. you're an asshole, not a chance. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm just 
being a cocky ass to the camera. Right, right. And then I walk out and the first cast in the goddamn line, <laughs> it wraps around my reel and my lure goes of flying course, out. Of course, of course. Right? And they didn't show that either. Oh, go, man, those that's nice what being cocky. Look <laughs> yeah, at that. I deserve That's what is <laughs> that land karma. show, right? Yeah. And I just laughed about it, you know? Mm. It was kind of, but like, I lost... I lost three lures out there that were working really good. And every time I did, it was just like, oh my God. And that lure mm -hmm. that day, it was just, I'd already missed a fish early. Yeah. I'd only had like six casts and I'd already had right. one fish in the onshore and another one missed and yeah. another one to follow up. Yeah. Like it was going to be that morning and I didn't have another lure to go. Uh, and, you know, and it was such I, a perfect morning too. Oh, I know. It's like every time you lost a lure, it was perfect right? fishing conditions. I of know. Course. You know what I mean? Yeah, it is. That's wild. So uh, aren't you, you're selling those lures though, aren't you? I'm going to be. Gonna, I, yeah. You know, I'm working with my buddy Aaron right mm -hmm. now and some different airbrush people. We're just working on getting the weights to work properly and what have you. And um, I'm going to call it the Gold Hellfire series. Guaranteed. One of the best things I ever yeah. did was name yeah. those lures. There yeah. was the Gold Hellfire and then there was the Gold Fury yeah. and then there was the Gold Demon and then the Gold yeah. Devil and then the yeah. Little Demon. Yeah. And they all worked. Yeah, and you know, uh, work for Lake Trout, work for Pike. Uh, yeah. I'll try them out a lot more. And Whitey, you caught a Whitey, or those were in my gill net. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, but uh, yeah, it was uh, they were working, mm -hmm. and same with Allen's uh, mm -hmm. Lake Trout baby one and two. They were working mm -hmm. good. Those were good too. What well, those are kind of like a jig head. Almost yeah, they were almost made. like a, a J plug type uh -huh. thing. You know, uh, Allen lives out in BC, kind of mm -hmm. like a. Uh, Oh, I guess you'd call it a, a hoochie type. He made it kind of look like a plug and then with a tail with the feathers mm -hmm. and shit coming off. Was, oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know what they call it. Like a skirted, yeah, uh, skirted yeah. jig head or something like yeah. that. So, yeah. Oh, it was working, man. He was doing great. Yeah. He's going to, yeah. he's going to have a couple made up uh, nice. for when him and I are going to do a, a spring fishing trip here. Uh, go and chase some northern pike and some walleye nice. and stuff around and uh, maybe hit a couple of lake trout lakes and right on. spend four or five days out there telling lies and yeah. watching, you know. <laughs> yeah. He's a great guy. Yeah. Uh, him and I spent about uh, 13 days together after oh, yeah. uh, in rehab, right? And right. Well, they don't let you go home right Oh, no, away, yeah. Right? You got to hang out. We were both in yeah. pretty rough shape. Yeah. 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 That's uh, 13 days is a while. Yeah. Well, yeah. I had edema. Uh, so they and then we got into yeah. some bad weather and they wouldn't fly. Yeah. So we uh, we spent two days in uh, Saskatoon where okay. it was nice because first night him and I went out yeah. and we attacked uh, pizza and wings and then the second <laughs> night we went out and uh, yeah. uh, hit an all you could eat buffet. So how much were you able to put down? Oh, a good amount. Yeah. So that goes to tell me how much food you were still getting out there. Yeah, because like, when I tried to get out, I couldn't eat that much. I still did, but I felt super full after eating like a handful of grapes and like a piece of toast. Right. I felt bloated and full and I had to kind of slowly eat. Not you know? me. Like yeah. I, I ate every day. Right. From about day from about day thirty four mm -hmm. on, I don't think I missed a day. It's hard to imagine how, you know, like I said, again, we take for granted how much food we need, but I wonder if it's the lack of fat, the lack of salt. You know, like, I mean, fish don't have a ton of fat in them. No. You know, neither do partridge have, like, no or rough grouse, technically. They don't have, like, yeah, there's hardly yeah, anything and there. Like, that's why I yeah. ate every organ. I ate right. the brains. I ate the eyeballs, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, when I I haven't plucked a grouse, you know, I grew up where you step on the wings right. and breast them, you know. Yeah. I plucked every bird right. I ate and left every bit of skin on, yeah. you know. So yeah. you, you, you take note of that. Yeah. And, you know, that was one of the things that, you learn not to waste things, you know, mm. like there was not a morsel right. of that go, you know, yeah. and people ask me what I took most out of the, and I found it a very humbling experience, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, I, when I come back, mm -hmm. uh, that's how I describe my experience. Mm -hmm. And then when I, when they aired the show, mm -hmm. I literally got thousands of messages. Wow. Uh, people who had inspired, people who'd had drinking problems mm -hmm. and drug problems. That was really inspiring, actually. Yeah. You yeah. know, it, uh, not something I'm yeah. proud of, but yeah. at least something good come out of it. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that I touched so many people and mm -hmm. uh, resonated with them and on such a level that they felt comfortable enough that they could reach out and mm -hmm. talk to me. And mm -hmm. I, I, 
tried to answer everybody I could. Mm -hmm. And I think I got them all, but I, I'm totally new to technical. I, I never had social media until uh, the show. So right, it's kind right. of, of I've never had yeah. Facebook. I've never had Instagram. Now you're just blowing up. I know, right? It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. What's your Instagram? Uh, Wyatt Black 1971. Wyatt Black. Yeah, you're sharing some pretty, pretty great stuff there too as well. All about positive. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing I love about everybody mm -hmm. who's following me is everybody's staying positive and mm -hmm. I won't put anything on that's negative. Mm -hmm. um, negativity feeds negativity mm -hmm. and positivity feeds positivity. Right. And that's why, you know, a positive attitude goes yeah. so, it goes so far yeah. in life. And that's why, you know, you talk about me being on the show mm -hmm. and how I, I knew I had to keep, if mm -hmm. you start dwelling on the negative, mm -hmm. that's where it's going to take you is to mm -hmm. further and further into the negative. What did you tell yourself? I didn't really tell myself anything. I looked at the blessings I mm -hmm. had and, and mm -hmm. I appreciated mm -hmm. everything so much. Mm -hmm. I, every sunset, watching the northern lights, mm -hmm. the one night, the moon, I felt like I could reach out and touch mm -hmm. it. It was mm -hmm. so close and so bright. Mm -hmm. and so you just, you just uh, connected with your surroundings, with nature. Totally. Yeah. I felt yeah. so at home there. Yeah. It, was, it was unbelievable. Yeah. It took a while. It was day 34 where I yeah. talked about actually coming to terms with the land. Mm -hmm. And the na the natives, that's what they believed out there, that that's why Mother Nature treated me so well, mm -hmm. was because she had a purpose for me. And that's why I didn't win, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. because that, but she was going to look after me while I was out there. Mm -hmm. And she did, like... Mm -hmm. It was truly a healing process, mm -hmm. and uh, it's hard to describe. It, mm -hmm. You know, it, you know when you're trying to describe a feeling, mm -hmm. it, it, how do you do it? it right? is, how do you do it, it justice? Yeah. You know, it, whether it, it be sad, yeah. whether it be happy, it doesn't right. matter what that feeling or emotion is. Right. How do you really? portray it you know I, I was a guy named justin rain mm -hmm. was talking about you know i grew up in an era where boys don't cry mm -hmm. don't be crying oh, yeah, yeah, you know no, look, I never, shut up bro I've never, I've never seen about. my dad cry once in right. my entire life exactly yeah. Yeah. and he was talking about as parents mm -hmm. and all that we have we're living in a generation where there's a lot of suicides mm -hmm. a lot of self-harm mm -hmm. a lot of Teach your kids that it's okay to cry mm -hmm. so you know that something's bothering them. Right. So you know that they need help. Right. Because if they're not expressing it and mm -hmm. they're hiding everything, they're just shoving it down and you end up being like I was. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the wrong way to be. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I tell my kids all the time that I love them. Mm -hmm. My dad never told me that in my life. Mm -hmm. I know my dad loves me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you still crave to hear it. Mm -hmm. You know, and... and Mm -hmm. as a parent you learn to not make the same mistakes mm -hmm. as your father did mm -hmm. and i my dad used to always say it i should be a better father than mine was you should be a better father than i was right and your kids should be a better father than you were yeah if things go right yeah but you gotta be open and honest and talk about yeah. it and i mean part of the problem too is that kids copy what they see your their dad doing right i didn't know nobody ever taught me that i should you know, my dad never said, oh, get out there, you pussy. Or, you, you know, like, well, you know, once in a while he said, I need to get some lead in my ass or something right. like that. We probably had a point. I don't even know what that meant. But you know, I remember or my get first. Get lead out of your ass. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe he just screwed it up. I don't yeah, know. It's, a, it's a heavy weight. Get <laughs> your ass moving. Well, well, you got lead in your ass. <laughs> I'm just standing around wondering what the hell he said. What are you talking about, <laughs> old man? <laughs> But, but absolutely. But my first memories of my dad were him building docks and carrying, chopping down trees and carrying them over his shoulder. So it wasn't like, get, get out there. I just didn't work hard. It's just like, that's just what I thought you did. That's right. You know what I mean? And then if I can improve off of whatever he did, uh, did you know, we just create a better and better world. That's why I thought it was great that you kind of, that you got that message out there. Because I think the thing that's interesting about it is these are things that everybody kind of deals with. Uh, but but they're super relatable, yet nobody really talks about them. No, you, you know, know? And I come home and I actually yeah. apologize to my dad. Mm -hmm. And people go, and I don't agree with everything that mm -hmm. we dealt with growing up. Right. I, but he had his reasons. Didn't he put the boots to you when you when you had the marina or whatever? 
Back in you owned a marina. Hardly you, seen him. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I was nine years old when he yeah. bought the marina, and uh, he had to keep his job down in General Tire and Barry. Yeah. So he worked from, he yeah. worked Monday night, Tuesday, yeah. Wednesday, come home Wednesday night, work all night yeah. in the shop, drive back to General Tire Thursday, wow. work Thursday, Friday, drive home Friday night, yeah. work Friday night, Saturday, Sunday in the shop, yeah. dark till dark, yeah. and then do it all again. He did that for five years. Yeah. So I hardly seen him. Mm-hmm. I regretted it. I, but you I resented it. Ran a marina at well, such a young I, age. I did everything almost. as yeah. far as looking after my younger brothers and sisters, wow, yeah. cooking the dinners, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, uh, my brother and I doing the firewood, cutting mm-hmm. the uh, cutting the grass, shoveling the snow, just everything. Mm-hmm. And, and there was no choice in it, mm-hmm. you know. And so basically, we lost our childhood mm-hmm. per se, yeah. and we lost our father. You know, yeah. previous to that. Mm-hmm. he had all the time to go mm-hmm. hunting go fit right then there was none of it yeah he got to go on occasion mm-hmm. and really resented it and it was like i always felt that i had never was doing good enough mm-hmm. and, and you know maybe he kind of reinforced mm-hmm. that a bit but but when i was out on reindeer lake mm-hmm. i always blame my dad for my alcohol right. abuse i used him as my excuse for right my, <clears throat> And when I was out there, I started remembering, oh man, I can remember when dad taught me this. I can remember when dad and I did this. I can remember all these things that I'd forgot. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't that I'd forgot them. It was I spent all my time dwelling on the negative Mm -hmm. that I pushed aside all the good he did. Mm -hmm. And that time out there allowed me to regain those positive memories Mm -hmm. to reflect on the good things Mm -hmm. and to forget about the bad Mm -hmm. right the weight that was lifted Mm -hmm. just by being and like i said i wouldn't be able to do i wasn't a guy to go lay on a couch Mm -hmm. uh, and talk to a shrink i could tell yeah or just lay on a couch in general right yeah so being out there and no alcohol, no drugs, no mm-hmm. nothing. Me and the truth. Mm-hmm. And Mother Nature to help me heal. Mm-hmm. And that's what it did. Mm-hmm. A- and it didn't just heal me on one level. It was on many levels. Mm-hmm. And it reestablished a connection that I'd lost with my dad 50-some years ago. Or Got back to that baseline ago. or something. Yeah, and, yeah. and remembering the positive. Because mm-hmm. if it wasn't for him... Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have been able to be on that show. Right. And I wouldn't have been able to do as good as I did. Mm-hmm. And it was all the truth that mm-hmm. allowed me to realize that. Mm-hmm. And once again, appreciate it. Mm-hmm. And it gave me something back. Yeah. Amazing, man. That's that's well said. And, you know, I can, I can uh, uh, you know, at no, no two people's experience are the same. Uh, but for me, I just little things that I thought were a big deal, I realized were just petty when I was out there. Right. And I realized that things that I worried about, regardless of relationships, but just things that I worried about in my life were like nothing. I'm like, what have I been worrying about this stuff for, for so much? You know what I mean? And what we need, Mm -hmm. you know, I was truly happy out there Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. I had nothing. You, you looked happy. I was, my eyes were even blue. Yeah. Oh yeah. You look, you could tell that you were just even like way into the show. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, when a lot of people are miserable, I remember thinking out there, um, God, nature is beautiful, but it's kicking my ass right now. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. And even though I kept doing it and grinding it out, I don't know if I was as happy as you out there on, from a day to day basis. You know what I mean? I also had my brother that we were grinding my gears back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good thing about be my brother though is that even though like because i'm i had another person there that knows me at my worst since i was a kid yeah you, i'm not embarrassed we're not embarrassed to act extremely immature in front right. of each other yeah and because of that we tend to not bottle things up where if there's somebody else i would be like oh man i want to tell him to stop but you know that would be i don't want to say that to him or i don't want to he's going to think it's weird that i'm annoyed by this thing or whatever right and then you know a month later you'd just be like you'd, you'd snap on them and they'd be like whoa you're crazy right right so in a way because my brother and i fought out there which 
which also, you know, the show, we gave them a, a lot of good arguing footage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you set the cameras up, but there's only so long you can, like, try to fake it, even if you, you know, pretend that you're not. So we ca captured this arguing footage, but they did lean into it a little bit sure. more, right? Like, one of the things I wish that they'd uh, they'd done is, um, is show I made these cool paddles. So when you make a paddle, you can't, the blade can't be wider than the log that you have, right? right? Um, so I whittled these two paddles, you know, using different techniques out of like a cedar this big and people are like oh one of jim's items was paddles you know because they look great i'm right. like oh man never made never made the show you know right. what i mean yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah we didn't we didn't maybe fight as much as regularly as we showed right you know but uh at the same time for me i think that was an interesting thing because being out there with my brother also made us realize that you know nothing can really like break our bond. our experience and bond too right, right? yeah you know? my brother and i are yeah. here in 10 days apart and yeah. we're the same you know mm. like we've mm. we don't hold punches we we right. it whatever mm. we've beat the shit out of mm -hmm. each other since we can remember you know <laughs> we and we don't too. we don't yeah. hold back but right. that's what allows us right to be yeah you know and it's the same with me and my friends that like we've just always been that way mm -hmm. like we don't and we don't hold it against each mm -hmm. other you know right in you can opinion, get in a little argument here or there difference of opinion yeah. doesn't matter you know an opinion's yeah. like an asshole everyone's right. got one. <laughs> yeah, that's the like, truth you know? especially nowadays <laughs> right man. yeah oh it's yeah. brutal like and yeah. the bottom, why can't we do acceptance is key. yeah yeah we, you mentioned that as well yeah you can't yeah. change anybody yeah you can't have anybody change you mm -hmm. we are we who we are mm -hmm. so you have a choice do I accept this person and who they are and what they bring mm -hmm. or I don't and I choose not to associate. Right. It doesn't mean you have to begrudge, belittle or anything negative to that person. Mm -hmm. You just have to set yourself aside from that right. person. Right. That's all. Yeah. It doesn't mean you're right. It doesn't mean they're wrong. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean anything like that. Mm -hmm. It just means we're different and we're not compatible. Yeah. We're oil and water. Big mm -hmm. deal move on yeah do you're not, not not everyone's gonna like you you're not gonna get right. uh, like with don't else. let it consume you don't yeah. let it bother you yeah but don't put yourself in the position right. where it can yeah how important was that positive attitude when you're out there like i remember when you woke up that one day and you said this is going to be an amazing day there's something or you said there's something different about yeah. this day and what happened was you went out there and you lost your lure and you, i saw you you're just like Oh, and then you just you kind of caught yourself and you're like nope i'm gonna go uh do bowl. something else and then guess what freaking christmas day yep. you know what i mean two grouse red yeah. squirrel yeah. white fish in the gill net yeah yeah and the whole day stayed calm yeah. the water was still and it was calm yeah, beautiful i wish day. i had a show in my yeah. smoker because yeah. i had the big pike out mm -hmm. of my gill net mm -hmm. that i hadn't finished smoking because right it, it, if you notice i really yeah, smoked I my stuff up good because yeah. the taz there when he pulled yeah. with it, i went dude that was a, oh man you're you know yeah. i can tell not just dry by the color enough. right yeah, not dry enough. Uh, you know so but yeah. i had that smoker and i got two grouse a red squirrel mm -hmm. great big pike beautiful lake trip beautiful white fish on mm -hmm. it and i'm just like oh this is mm -hmm. smorgasbord heaven i'm gonna mm -hmm. eat like a king tonight you know yeah, that looks awesome and then i sat there yeah. and had my labrador tea and yeah. watching the sunset yeah. and the stars come out in the northern lights and yeah. just going how blessed am i yeah you know yeah. and that amount of time mm -hmm. with no materialism mm -hmm. no tv no video game no telephone mm -hmm. no nothing and feeling that full and that alive mm -hmm. and that good mm -hmm. just shows you what we don't need, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we need to regress back to a simpler life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, everybody's in a whole big hurry to go nowhere. Right. And, you know, yeah. we all worry about what we have and what have uh -huh. you, and we forget about what really matters. Yeah. And, you know, I, uh, I still get up on the weekends and yeah. my boys are 21 and 23 and yeah. I'm making big breakfasts and eggs Benedict and French toast and pancakes nice. and everybody's sitting around. We still have dinner together. Mm -hmm. You know, um, those are things that matter. Mm -hmm. And we talk about what they're, you know, mm -hmm. because life is busy. And mm -hmm. So you make time, mm -hmm. you know, and even if it's something. Prioritize. Simple, right. 
having dinner as a family, mm -hmm. having breakfast as a, you know, instead of mm -hmm. just getting up and going and out the door and all mm -hmm. the rest of it. You know, hunting and fishing is one of those things that I can do with my kids mm -hmm. and we're all happy in it. Right. You know, and it, it's, uh, I was never a bear hunter until right. many years later. Um, but when turkey season came in, mm -hmm. it was a whole different because I was always a fall hunter. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going Something hunting to do in, in the, the spring, spring. Mm -hmm. and watching the bush come mm -hmm. to life mm -hmm. rather than go to sleep for the winter. Mm -hmm. What a different experience. E eating some trout lilies. You're right. Yeah, and you're sitting there. Exactly. Yeah. A pile of leeks yeah, and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. it was, and yeah. I love that. And, yeah. you know, I've been able to share that with my wife and my mm. boys and my, my family, my dad, mm -hmm. my grandfather, my uncle, you know. Mm -hmm. And those are the bond, bonds mm -hmm. that keep families family. So what was it like, Wyatt, to catch a fish uh, on a rod that you made with a lure that you made, but also in a situation where you really need that fish because you're super hungry and potentially you could have won $500,000. Yeah, I'll tell you. I, I've i been blessed growing mm. up in the Muskokas and what have you, and I went fishing on every spare mm. moment. Uh, Quagama Lake and Lake of Bays were just incredible lake trout lakes. I've caught mm. more lake trout than nice. I can imagine. More smallmouth bass, mm. more speckled trout, more whitefish. I was out there on Reindeer Lake, and I had uh, carved a rod and reel very similar to what Clay Hayes made. Mm -hmm. um, I basically stole Clay's design. And right. He was my right. inspiration for that rod and reel, yeah. so thank you, Clay. Yeah. Um, and then I carved the lure, and yeah. you know there was a little bit of trial and error. Mm -hmm. And I was down there on my point, and I, I all of a sudden I get this fish on, mm -hmm. and I've caught, like I say, just countless fish, and I got that fish in, and I felt like I was four years old again <laughs> yeah. catching my. Like, yeah, I have. I can't remember mm -hmm. when I was so excited mm -hmm. to catch a three or four pound lake cherry. Yeah, as I was at that, I, like every bit of it was just incredible mm -hmm. uh the fact that i'd made the rod the fact that i'd made the reel the fact that i'd made the lure the fact that everything worked and now mm -hmm. i'm gonna get to enjoy the rewards mm -hmm. of my effort and it solidified the fact that you you have the right to be here mm -hmm. you know you you mm -hmm. are because i laugh when they call me a survival expert mm -hmm. because i'm not right i know how to survive mm -hmm. i know Clearly. how to but like mm -hmm. when it comes to like Luke Olson and the way he could light a fire and his knowledge yeah. of so many things, napping arrowheads, exactly uh, you know, these it, kinds of things, it, it, it's far beyond my yeah. level. Mm -hmm. uh, but when it comes to hunting skills mm -hmm. and fishing skills and stuff mm -hmm. like that, oh, I'm far above. His Just level. toughing it out, right? right? That too, and you know, um, those are just things that make us all different you know you take mikey mikey lasted 55 days out there that mm -hmm. boy has never seen mm -hmm. snow right he grew up in georgia yeah, yeah. where right now you look outside here and it's yeah. white and the lakes are frozen yeah. and he's standing down at home in a t-shirt right you know totally it, different world he's yeah. never seen this yeah and that dude out there freezing hit yeah. you know i give that man a lot of credit dude that was uh that was uh tugged on the heartstrings oh, uh, yeah, his last dude. scene talking about his kid especially somebody who myself is the father of a kid with uh with special needs um and seeing him uh, talk about that and his connection uh from it man you know I, I almost just if I if I was out there and I knew that was going on, I probably just would have tapped out to let him win. If I, you I, know? Said, that, I, yeah. I said that on camera one day. Yeah. I, I said yeah. I, I said Mikey, yeah. I I said I I got a feeling mm -hmm. you're still out here with me. Mm -hmm. I said, but I don't know. And I said, mm -hmm. if I had known it was just you and me out here, brother, I would mm -hmm. tap. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I believe you would. I believe I, I you would have. Yeah, I, I love that man. Yeah. He, yeah. You know, he is that soul and. I'm not saying I I, I would have uh, not liked the 500 grand. Mm -hmm. That's an absolute bullshit story. Mm -hmm. But I don't need it like right. Mikey does. Right, right. And yeah. I, and I, I I I'm good with not walking away with the 500 grand. Yeah. But the way 
that the uh, world, the viewers of Alone and stuff stepped up. Luke started that GoFundMe yes. page, and the last it was at one hundred and five thousand or something. And Mikey well, didn't even want to do it; he felt weird about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. because that's the type of man he is. Right. Um, Mikey was in real bad shape um, yeah. when he came out because. Yeah. How many days was he out there 55. for? 55. Yeah, so pretty close. Really. Yeah, yeah, and he felt that he had every skill in the world and he had a driving power, mm. uh, you know, and he just couldn't make it work. Mm -hmm. He lost 90-some pounds out there. He's a 90 beast. 90 pounds? Yeah, he's a beast oh of a man. God. He's like six foot five and about freaking 305 wow. or something when he went wow. in. Wow, wow. So he's, he's like my height. Oh, yeah, he's, yeah, a, he's yeah. a beast of a man. Holy shit. And, yeah. uh, you know, um, and Nikolai, is his son, mm -hmm. um, uh, Mikey said it the one day. He said, "For all you uh, parents out there that tell your kids, oh, just go mm -hmm. be quiet," he says, uh, "Don't do that." Mm -hmm. He says, "There's a lot of fuss parents mm -hmm. out there that just love to hear our kids say a word." Yeah, I like and that. Yeah, th that resonates a lot. And you know, mm -hmm. that's the one thing about the Alone family is that, as a rule, they're all mm -hmm. good people. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I've met a lot of them, not just from my season, but mm -hmm. like yourself and like Clay and like Jordan, and um, mm -hmm. you know the list goes on. I wonder why, because of what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, nature mm -hmm. and nature and nurture go together, mm -hmm. and and we tend to be family. We tend to have that respect. We tend to think outside the box, mm -hmm. and our lives aren't driven by materialism. Right. And we view things very different than people mm -hmm. who do. Mm -hmm. um, we know what it's like to procure our own food. Mm -hmm. We know what it's like to have knowledge walking into the bush. Mm -hmm. We don't walk into the bush like it's a foreign place. Mm -hmm. We go to the city and it's a foreign yeah, place, yeah. right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So we feel going mm -hmm. to the city mm -hmm. like a person from the city feels like mm -hmm. coming up to the woods, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it, it's all good. But that. Yeah. It creates a different yeah. respect and a different personality. Mm -hmm. uh, we're slower up here. Mm -hmm. We, you know, if I don't get at it today, I'll get at it tomorrow. Type mm -hmm. thing, you know. It's uh, uh, we're not like I said, big rush to go nowhere. Well, we don't have that up here in the same mm -hmm. mannerism that a right. lot of people do. And right, yeah. I, I think that plays a big part of it. Mm -hmm. And the show they're casting for people that are going to resonate with the audience. Right. You know, they want, yeah. like, that's the one thing. We were given an opportunity where people actually feel like they know us. Right. And for a large part, they do. Yeah, yeah. You know, and we put our heart on a sleeve out there, and, you know. Yeah. Nobody wants to go cry in front of 43 million people or right. whatever is watching, you it's know. Not, that's not the, the first uh, plan on the list when no. you head out. Yeah. And, but we expose ourselves to everything mm -hmm. and we allow the mm -hmm. world to and the sad part is is people make opinions like mm -hmm. people went on a lot about mikey and his other children and what mikey talked all about his other children mm -hmm. i i know that i was listening to it they had almost 600 hours of mikey on film mm -hmm. they're gonna break that down into yeah, couple. how many stories can they possibly tell? They have time to tell one story with a couple side plots, right. and so and they the can't one, focus on everything. Or you just have a bunch of jumbled stuff. You exactly, know? and the one yeah. that resonated the most with people was his autistic right. son, yeah. and that's what resonates the most with him. Mm -hmm. That son of his is like his, you know, that is his pride. That is mm -hmm. his reason for everything he does. Mm -hmm. um, look at what the awareness that was raised for autism, mm -hmm. the generosity of people. There was people that were donating $5. Mm -hmm. That person that donated $5, that was probably like somebody giving $1,000 because they don't have the money. Right. But they still yeah. felt that that was a worthy yeah. enough cause to sacrifice something on their own yeah. to make somebody else's life better. And right. there's a lot of people in this world that are that yeah. way. Yeah. And we need a lot more, yeah. uh, you know, but that's what alone does. Yeah. It, it, it creates, um, it creates positivity and good vibes. I and, think so. And peace. Yeah. You know? I, I think, uh, well, absolutely. Like some of the stuff that you're saying is putting good stuff out there into the world. And I think as somebody that has spent a lot of time in the bush, 
you know to think positive and then you kind of take that back in your life and that comes uh, that comes through when you're talking to your friends when you're meeting people and these kinds of things you know you know well geez if i'm not gonna if i give up if i stop hunting today we're not gonna get anything you know that if you just keep at it eventually probably it's gonna come through you know you know that it that if you just keep staying out there you know what how many rainy days in a row are we gonna have it's gonna get sunny before too long or this storm will break yeah you know what i mean and maybe maybe that's where it comes from when you have time in the bush and i think also just uh just doing getting exercise everybody feels good after they get some exercise after they play a sport after they go for a jog whatever everybody feels good when they're in the bush too. mix those two together and guess what? You're pretty freaking happy, well, and you know. Fresh air, yeah, and, you yeah. Know, yeah. They're just you know, and simple things like mm. how much better things taste, and yeah, you know, how much better you sleep. Yeah, you know, it's amazing. You know, mm. like, when you've worked that hard, mm-hmm. and you're full of fresh air, and mm-hmm. everything's been good, and then you lay your head down, and man, you can just. <sighs> and then when you yeah. wake up, you're up. Yeah. It's not like you're hitting their snooze for for yeah. you. You right. get up, right, right, right? and yeah. that's the, yeah. It, that life breathes life into your soul. It, mm-hmm. it, like we live off of energy, mm-hmm. and Mother Nature provides us that mm-hmm. energy. Uh, you know, things like grounding and stuff. It proves that the ground will heal and draw toxins and stuff out of your body interesting you know yeah, yeah there's yeah. so many things you know yeah. going and jumping in ice water right you know what it does for yeah. people don't realize the simple thing dandelions yeah. you know one of the biggest companies i forget the name of them that starts with an m one of the big big pharma drug companies you know yeah they also own roundup yeah. you know because they want to kill every monsanto di- or something yeah that's what it is yeah and, you know there sounds all- like an evil dictator they are it? yeah so they the are. name monsanto sounds like literally some warlord or evil evil person right you know? there's so many natural yeah. healing agents yeah in our woods out there mm-hmm. and not just here all over the world mm. you know we were talking about cannabinoids from mm. our cbds from mm. marijuana we we're talking about how many other plants mm. our bodies have cannabinoid receptors mm-hmm. it's big pharma and companies mm. that go they see the values but those values not going to make a dime off of it. right when you could just make that medicine yourself exactly. why are they going to put money into the reason they're going to lose money even exactly. if they're great people we're, they're not going to be in business to lose the shareholders' money, right? right. It's it's kind of common sense. Rose hip, rose hip tea. Yeah, you know things like that. You know the mint that you were mm-hmm. talking about. Yeah, earlier. that stuff's great for exactly. Jardia. Yeah, and yeah. you know ginger for yeah. you know. The, What'd you call me? Uh, <laughs> it's good. It's good, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, you know, and yeah. Rogers. <laughs> yeah, you, are you old enough to know who Ginger Rogers was? A little bit, but Fred I'm not that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not an now. expert on it. You know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. Hey, I saw something there showing these millennials that don't know what a VCR is. I know, right? I'm like, oh my god. Man, I might, actually, there. my wife went and found a VCR. Mm-hmm. She wanted to buy one and couldn't buy one anywhere. Yeah. But we've got a bunch of old mini tapes from when our kids were growing up we had yeah. one of those old camcorders yeah, right yeah and we had the vcr yeah. cassette that you pop it into the tape and then you put it in a vcr yeah well she went everywhere to try and find a vcr she phones my mother yeah and says pat you know, wouldn't happen she says oh i got four of them and figured she had four vcrs stuck in her storage because she knew someday somebody someday. was going to need a vcr i and- went into a store i was actually looking for this table and that you know because i yeah, wanted to buy a cheap a table for this and i went into this uh, uh, uh this uh antique store and i found the exact phone that i had in my house when i was a kid i'm like oh shit man i'm old right that's it yeah so one of the like yeah. this i'm like man this is in an antique store now no you right. know i moved away from new law when yeah. i was nine years old or yeah nine years old yeah four two four one zero zero one was my phone number mm-hmm. back then because when you were out of buddies or something you had to phone home mm-hmm yeah 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 it was more fun though i found right? and then you screw up yeah oh, uh, shit yeah. i gotta start it off. takes another hour you know <laughs> yeah yeah you know but that gave you your memory to remember that phone yeah. number you know and like i was in kindergarten yeah. and walked to school every day right oh my crazy right yeah. you 
try and let your kid do that. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah like you're, yeah. you're a bad parent. You, right. you know, like what the hell? Yeah, I thought my parents were so paranoid when I was a kid, and then I'm looking back at family videos, and they're like embarrassed that they're letting us do the things that we're doing in the video, and they're like, "Well, you didn't actually need a boating license when you were that <laughs> age. There was no boating licenses back then, you know." And I'm looking at my, you know, my cousin's kids who are, you know, great people. So I'm not about to throw them under the bus. Couldn't even start the boat motor and put it in the water or at, at, when they're d double my age, when I'm out there freaking taking my brother, you know, water skiing, you right. know what I mean? Like, uh, I don't know if it's just the newer generation or just more of a, a bubble wrap thing, or there really are more dangers that we, we can't teach kids as much, but my dad was yeah. that way yeah. that if you were old enough to start the snowmobile yeah. or big enough to start the snowmobile right. or the boat motor, then mm -hmm. you could drive it. Right. If you right. couldn't start it, you yeah. couldn't take it because if something happened, you wouldn't be able to start it. Right. Yeah. But as soon as you were old enough that yeah. you can pull that snowmobile and start it. Yeah. Go ahead. Then you knew you're going to be okay. Yeah. yeah. Nine, nine, 10 years old. Yeah. You know, and my brother yeah. and I'd have the beagle and a pair of 22s on and we'd be right. driving over to McGuire's nice. bush to go rabbit hunting, that's, you know, that's awesome, and, man. you know, yeah. neither of us had a gun license. Neither right. of us had yeah. a snowmobile yeah. license. You know? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and, yeah. But that was the way life was. Right. You know, I talk about respect and we talk about guns mm -hmm. and stuff. Now my grandfather and he's dead now, so nobody's going to give, but when we went to his house, he had, nine children mm -hmm. 27 grandchildren mm -hmm. 225 acre farm when you walked in the front door of the mm -hmm. old farmhouse yeah behind the door was a loaded yeah. gun right right when you went to the back door yeah. was a loaded gun right when you went to the garage yeah behind each door there was a loaded gun right, right. when you went to the barn behind yeah. each door was a loaded gun yeah yeah not one accident Right, not, right. And every one of us knew mm -hmm. how to use it. Right. Every one of us knew right. not to touch it. Right. Everyone knew the consequences if you did. Right. You know, and there was that respect for Right. We didn't do the stupid things. Right, right. That, you know, you learn every gun yeah. you treat like it's yeah. loaded. That all come through with time. And, right. You know, and <laughs> Christ, now we worry pocket knife right. i can remember at five years old yeah. i had a pocket knife and would be out there cutting wood yeah. now kids that are 12 and 13 year olds go oh my i gotta ask my mom right i did stab myself pretty good with my pocket we all knife did. twice yeah and then you learned don't do <laughs> and that then my dad would get mad at me so i don't even <laughs> right. want i'm like covering Pay i'm attention. like you covering up the injury I mean, it's, what's all that blood jim i'm like nothing you know <laughs> Like I was trying to make an arrow one time, and I, had my, I was holding the stick like this, and I was pushing down, and it wasn't going all of a sudden went oh, yeah. right in there. Right. And, you know, then we're like a 10, 5K boat ride from the road, 45-minute drive to town at the time, right? Uh, and I got in trouble. Now I'm bleeding and in trouble, right? But, you know, I didn't uh, <laughs> didn't do it again. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And we're all, we all live. We got a few scars yeah. to prove it. That's yeah. okay. It's kind of yeah. like hockey. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, there we go. This Let somebody the shoot a hard pocket swing sticks at us on blades on our yeah. feet. <laughs> yeah, it's a good metaphor, man. I like that. Yeah, I get that too now that I have these these younger kids and I'm, like you're saying, so you get some comments in that from the show that are just like out of touch. Man, try taking your kids out there or even your freaking dog and putting it on YouTube. Man, the kind of opinions people have, they think that like your dog should be perfectly comfy beside a warm fire and never have to do anything that it didn't want to do ever and like the same thing with your kid right and you know people take for granted how dangerous the things that they do in their day-to-day -day lives are driving a car from point a to point b on the highway you know you're you well, you have a one in sixty thousand chance of getting murdered right you know you what yet there's been four people have died from bear attacks four four or six let's say maybe six people in four bear attacks have died in the last hundred years in ontario right but yet everyone's like there's there's bears in the woods you're taking your kids out there you know what i mean right. i'm like they're safer here than than at home i would say if, if you know what i know you the know the biggest fear in the yeah. world is the fear of the unknown right and yeah. you know uh when you break down fear, F E A R, mm. false evidence appearing real. Yeah, and most nice. people don't know what they're afraid of. Right, and you know, um, it's one of those things mm -hmm. where um, we spend so much time on ignorance. Right, um, people have so many opinions mm -hmm. that are based on ignorance and mm -hmm. not facts. Right, they, uh, you know, like you talk with the dogs. Well, if you go out to Alaska mm -hmm. and you've got a hunt whole bunch of huskies sleeping mm -hmm. under a foot of snow mm -hmm. <clears throat> you might walk out of your 
apartment, house, whatever in the morning. And ever, and then all of a sudden you'll see 12 Huskies rise up out of the snow and give them themselves a shake off. Mm -hmm. Those Huskies get fed once every four to five days. Right, right. Oh my yeah. God, that's so. Yeah. Well, those dogs have a purpose and they're going to be running sleds and we can't carry right. enough food uh -huh. to feed that whole tray of sled dogs. Right, right. And by you going and thinking you're doing it a favor and throwing it a meal every day yeah. behind my back, you're uh -huh. killing that dog. Right, potentially. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and also the the you have to understand the breed of that dog too. Like they're just a wolf. You know, yeah. It's like I, I get comments because I've done some trips where I have my dog walking beside me in the winter. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm up on you know I was up on Baffin Island. I big did a big trek there, and people are like, "Where are his boots?" I'm like, "Well, you know, the dog's <laughs> boots. They, they, like I explained, like the circulation, the arteries and veins touch, and the the boots are really more meant for when they're on a brace of snow and what." the snow is on really soft on our and, well, what about snow blindness i'm like do the wolves get snow blindness you know what i mean are the right. are the caribou getting snow blindness so i think some you know southern breeds of dog not near as easy as we could could get it but like my husky malamute is going on a eight hour walk a day towing sleds in the snow this is yep. like the thing that all that ever dream all the city huskies just dream right. about being my dog right, right. All the this is this dog is watching not, yeah. mine going diving into yeah. a dirty old loon shit pond to go <laughs> yeah. pick up a duck they're going yeah. oh pick me pick me yeah <laughs> man know? yeah and like I, I remember getting stuck in a blizzard one time and my dogs like drifted over he was like comfortably sleeping i was like i gotta they yeah. don't sweat i'm like i gotta get my tent up and if i can't get my tent up i'm gonna die and my dog's just like i accidentally couldn't see him i accidentally kind of kicked him a bit and he just went lift his head up like, what are you doing stop bothering me right all yeah, right you know but people kind of were, were sort of uh, we become out of touch with a lot of this stuff, yeah. you know, and I, I guess having the experience like you're on alone get, gets you to to really kind of uh, reframe things, get back to what's important. It also it also made me kind of look at society almost in a in a different way it, because of the food, because of being so hungry, just being like, my God. The infrastructure to get all this food to the stores and the fact that any of that even works is amazing. You, well, know? you know, you take common sense too. Yeah. We've got every mm -hmm. apartment building, condominium, high rise yeah. in every major city in North mm -hmm. America. Yeah. We've proven that gardens on the top of them mm -hmm. are beneficial for uh, conservation mm -hmm. of heat, mm -hmm. keeping them cool. Yeah. So, it's better for the air conditioning. It's better for the heat, mm -hmm. all the rest of it. If we took every one of those apartments slash condominiums, all those elderly people that are sitting there with nothing to do, mm -hmm. thumb up the ass, watching Archie Bunker mm -hmm. or Jerry Springer or whatever the hell they're watching. Mm -hmm. Whereas if we could put a community <laughs> garden yeah. up on every roof of that, yeah. we're saving on the heat, we're saving on the, on the cooling, we're providing oxygen to the yeah, air yeah. we provide a sense of community it wouldn't be you'd have to pay somebody yeah. they'd all be up there more than willing to weed that garden right. make a fresh salad every night yeah share get to know their neighbors mm -hmm. it's a win-win-win mm -hmm. do we do it no 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 you know it's the same with so many things there's so many little things that we could do the fact that we uh sell a coffee mm -hmm. a soda pop in a container from McDonald's from Tim Hortons is asinine. We mm. should not be allowed to do it. How hard is it? I've got a mm. travel cup in my truck. Yeah. It's always there. I go to Tim Hortons. I got my own cup. I want a large right. coffee. Yeah. Yeah. You should have to pay a dollar. Right. For that cup. Yeah. It wouldn't take people long yeah. to realize yeah. that, oh, if I don't take my cup, it's going to cost me a right. dollar. Problem solved, basically. Exactly. Think about yeah. all the trees we're killing. Mm -hmm. Think about all the recycling that mm -hmm. we're having to do. Mm -hmm. Think about all the waste that we're doing. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. think about a head of lettuce, mm -hmm. yeah. a package of peppers, right. bag of carrots. Okay, all those things. We're putting them into packages. Right. For what? Nothing mm -hmm. more than labeling mm -hmm. and to sell more. Mm -hmm. And where is that packaging? Where's the, right the, the plastic? Landfill. And where did it even come from? It's like an oil product. Right. You know, the, the levels of manufacturing and everything and the, you know, the fossil fuels burn and the mining and the pollution to the earth just There's to wrap a piece of lettuce. Look at you what, know? you know, that Project Oceans mm. with the two guys that mm. started going and yeah. pulling, right? Yeah. 
millions and millions of tons mm -hmm. of plastics they're pulling up, pulling out mm -hmm. of our oceans because we're disgusting. Yeah, we, we really are. Mm -hmm. the, the albatross, <laughs> yeah. right? They they breed on an island stuck out in the middle of nowhere yeah. on the amazing seas. birds. Huge. And their young are dying yeah. from the intake of their parents are feeding them plastic because mm -hmm. they're they're having to clear plastic off their beaches because they're right on that natural uh, current system that all the shit we're throwing in the oceans and that are piling up on there. You know, mm -hmm. that's how bad we are. Mm -hmm. You know, we here in North America, we're sending our tires and stuff to other countries where mm -hmm. they light them on fire because right. it's illegal for us to do here. Right. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, and now they're going to tax pizza uh, oven, wood pizza oven uh, restaurants. Yeah. Because they're, you know, they're carbon footprint. Right. Whatever. Like, yeah, what yeah. the hell is wrong with us? Yeah. You know, yeah. there's so many good ideas that could be made great ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a Polish company. I can't remember the name of it. But when they started taking all these Aguil arts or whatever they call them, the Russian... Mm -hmm rich guys with all their great big super yachts and what mm -hmm. have you so this polish company th the whole hull mm -hmm. is devised out of solar panels mm -hmm. you can go up with a sledgehammer and hit these wow. and you can't break them mm -hmm. right the whole ship is run on them and two wind turbines mm -hmm. and we're talking like 400 foot super yachts you know like and wow. they're running everything wow. off of that's awesome completely solar hopefully that's the future every new high rise yeah. that we build in north america mm -hmm. should be made to have 50 percent of that glass that's used as those solar panels mm -hmm. so that is a window that's a solar panel that's mm -hmm. a window that's a solar panel and mm -hmm. just reverse them 50 percent. we could run all those buildings mm -hmm. on green energy mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. by doing that cool but yeah. nobody will do it yeah yeah i know is this when you were out there alone were you thinking about this kind of stuff constantly yeah, yeah, me too, man. Yeah. I just felt like you got this clarity. You remember before when you were talking about uh how it's really hard to explain a feeling? Yeah. Some of the some of those things when you get that clarity, it comes from lack of food or like fasting. A lot of people yeah. say they get clarity from fasting. Just from being in the bush, being there with your thoughts, doing these kind of uh routines, you kind of common sense starts to reveal itself to you right. in in a lot of ways. And one of the things that I was explaining is like, oh my God, the infrastructure to get all this food into the stores is like so much. Uh, I started to realize it and step back. And then you realize what I was talking about, how, you know, you only have so much time to build projects every day. You look in the survival books and there's like 20 different uh, uh, shelters and you're like, maybe I'll build that one. Maybe I'll build one of those. Maybe I'll, and it's like, okay, I have time to build one of these things right. because I got to be also getting food. And then you start to realize the whole thing about how people went from once we started farming all of a sudden people had all this other time to do things i'm like man did i ever learn that lesson out there right right and but it, it's you you read things a hundred times in books you know it's like what you're saying how you learn from doing you get a, a understanding that's deeper than what words can explain from doing this kind of things through the feelings and for, and, and uh, that's a way that i can best explain and i guess it's a it's a cop out because i'm not explaining it some of those experiences i had out there well and you know it's yeah. like you were talking about with my mm. rod and reel and lure yeah. it's that sense of personal accomplishment right yeah. you know we take pride in what we do yeah. and when like the cabin you and your brother built was beautiful mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Oh, my, wait a minute. No, we built uh, or our no, shelter yeah, was right. not impressive. Right. No, it was the other the <laughs> broken uh, Dave. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna have them on the show in the spring. By the way, they're gonna come in here. Nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that kind of, uh, Yeah. Yeah. Things like that. You know, yeah. the one Jody and Lee built and what mm. uh, great things. Mm. Like, mm. You know, um, when you do those things, you have a sense of pride, a sense yeah. of accomplishment. You could see Lee had that. Oh like, yeah, both Lee them, is one but, of the most yeah. awesome individuals yeah. that you will ever meet in cool. this world. He, yeah. He's truly that guy. Yeah. Every one of us said that. And Lee, if you're watching, he's got great taste yeah. in music. <laughs> nice, yeah. nice. Right yeah, on, he's man. an awesome dude. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, I, I, I love everything about the whole mm. alone experience. Yeah, yeah, me too, man. It was, uh, it was. It, I'm not gonna lie. It was, it was hard. Oh, and I've done, I've done. I was explaining to you some of the crazy kind of expeditions. So, so that's sort of more of my background. And uh, you know, I remember being in the middle of Arctic Quebec doing this solo winter crossing, stuck in a blizzard. You know, was I in more danger? You know, than alone was. You know, more scared. Yeah, I was in more danger than any of the buddy you see on survival shows for sure. But the mental challenge of alone not knowing when it's going to end and in the later days which you know we both made it well into yep. man those are the days man that they they test your your real oh, your metal time. man you Big know time. what i mean and i you know through that you can 
find learn that you can do a lot more than you think. Have you ever yeah. have you ever applied for it as an individual on a, on going on a loan, or did you just apply the one season? You know, I I originally did apply uh, for a loan for one season, but they weren't talking about doing two people in the following season. So all of a sudden, uh, they were asking me for um, this uh, sizzle reel, and I gave them something that my brother was also in, and they're like, "We want your brother too." And I was like, weird, but they weren't really explaining to me exactly why. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, well, I don't know. I don't know if I want to sign this contract. I went off and I did that crazy Arctic Quebec trek and I came back and my brother's like, all right, let's go on a loan. I'm like, I just been alone. Like, I'm just like, no, you know what I mean? But then some time went by and they're like, Hey, we're doing two people. They started, you know, they told us what was up and you know, I'm like, all right, let's, let's do this. Me and my, me and my wife went up to Northern Saskatchewan that same year and did a two week canoe trip down the uh uh, porcupine river which is one right. of the things that i thought was so cool about watching your experience on reindeer lake because i'd spent time in that, in that country area, and yeah. loved it you right. know what i mean oh it is beautiful yeah. like and so yeah. vast like it there, yeah. there's nothing man. nothing like, yeah, yeah. We, we, we went into la Ronge yeah. and then we drove yeah. down the uh the churchill river trading yeah. post and then flew that's a cool store it is it yeah. ever yeah. And then flew a couple yeah. hours yeah. Uh, it was an hour and a half flight or something yeah over nothing right like they're not a yeah. And then we hit Arctic Lodges yeah. and like, right. you know, that lake's 245 kilometers mm -hmm. long and there's only a couple wow. of places on it. Most like, remote season of alone ever that you yeah, are. That's now, like good. you think, okay, the Arctic, you know, isn't that more, more remote? Uh, you know, some places are, yep. but where they did alone the Arctic, you know, you could drive a boat there from Yellowknife. You know, there was a, a lodge. It's still extremely remote, but as yeah, far yeah. as really far flung, you know, I understand you guys had the most uh, remote spot. Yeah, that's what they yeah. said. It was, yeah. it was wild. I Which is challenging place. when you're out there because there's more that you don't see before launch, more travel, more getting to where you're getting to. Yeah. And then on the other side too, it's like, uh, you know, I actually work behind the scenes a bit with, uh, with the season up on Great Slave Lake just to hang out with people that had tapped and they tapped and they're just like oh man I'm still I'm still in it like I'm just at a lodge with no heat on Great Slave Lake right, like right? they felt like whereas some of the other seasons when you tap you go back to like a town you know what I mean so you were kind of dealing with that too yeah well we we yeah. stayed at Arctic Lodges I think Alan and I yeah. I was there 11 days Alan was there nine I think yeah yeah, yeah there cool. is you know and because it was so remote. Yeah. I wasn't allowed to leave because Al and I were the last two. Right. I wasn't allowed to leave till they were going to let him leave. Right. And vice versa. Yeah, they so. upped the aftercare time because, well, you it, know, for, for health reasons and whatnot, yeah. uh, they don't just say, see you later, go home. They make you, they make you uh, 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 stick around. The full around. refeeding program. Yes. Is, yeah. You know, and it, it, that yeah. that is determined on how long a time you're there. Right. And like, I got to give them credit. They do look after you extremely well. Yeah. Like I, mm -hmm. I give them, I have nothing negative. To, and the food, mm -hmm. the ladies that were in the kitchen were awesome. That bone broth was, yeah. just, they, they served you. We didn't get bone broth now. Okay. So <sighs> we were, we, okay. So my season went over freaking Christmas and new years and yeah. you know, which was tough. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like, and uh, when we got out, all they had was like vegan soup for us. And we left these like gunnel fish at camp. And we're like, we should have brought the gunnel fish with us because we were eating more when we're out there. Right. So we had to like make a stink about it. And I think the crew was also just like, oh man, we just like, we're, we're they're kind of ready to get out of here. So maybe they, they were like having their wrap up party and they didn't want to hear about it from us. So we complained like, okay, okay, give them some grapes. And they like, they made, they made good with it. Right. But me and my brother were like a little pissed, like, right. you know, that we just had vegan soup. Right. Oh, yeah, like, no, yeah. we, my yeah. first meal was yeah. uh five dried apricots and ten almonds. Right, right. With a thing yeah. of bone broth. I'm like, yeah. are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm ready to eat you. And you're because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, you're Dave dreaming. Holder, the little guy. I can just carve <laughs> just him just you know, just, eat his arm like a chicken wing. Yes, and cannibalism it's gonna be for dinner, Dave. You know? He's a great guy. Uh, here's though, a I Snickers. Love Dave. Oh, he is. He's yeah. a beauty. Me and Tori went to meet uh went to hang out with him and Brenda, his wife, at their hey. uh, their place in Alberta, which is like a beautiful property, like sick, like a ranch pretty much yeah right? he he was showing yeah. me some pictures of it and yeah. what have you his yeah. wife uh brandy she yeah. made the pemmican oh, cool. for anybody and there was, i'll use her pemmican recipe too actually uh, yeah it was yeah. It, yeah. i won't say delicious it, yeah. was, it was 
Have you tried making it with wild blueberries? Uh, with with uh, not even wild, but just unfrozen blueberries? No. Game changer. Yeah. Game changer. Once you go, once you use the frozen blueberries, you know, obviously wild would be better, but who's, you know, get the, it's more expensive, but if you do fresh blueberries, man, it's like the aftertaste is like a fruit roll up and right. it's like sweet. Yeah, yeah. It's by far the best I've ever done. You know? One time, um, mm. my buddy Joe and my dad and another yeah. guy named Lynn Smith, we were up in Thunder Bay moose hunting. Yeah. And it was late, late season. And uh, all the berries had freeze dried onto, oh, nice. the, onto the yeah. plant. I don't know if you ever had it, but I, I picked a bunch of them because yeah. that's all that was there yeah. to make blueberry pancakes. And I knew they'd rehydrate. Yeah. I can't describe how good those and it's like ice wine. Nice. Yeah. All the sugars condensed ah, into those okay. blueberries. Yeah. yeah. And they puffed right up like a normal blueberry mm -hmm. in the pancake and what have you. And the sweetness and what have you. They were hands down the best blueberry pancakes I've ever eaten. Delicious. In my life. Yeah. yeah. You know, I could see that being different though than just grabbing a frozen bag of blueberries oh, from the, the grocery store. Though. Exactly. These you know? are freeze dried on right. the plant. Yeah. It's like mm -hmm. it's like ice wine. Mm -hmm. you know right. they let the grapes yeah it's like more expensive and fancier well and, and, it, and it's sweeter it increases the sugar content yeah. right through the roof yeah. and that's what happens yeah. with them drying on the plant i'd never and any chance i get that opportunity again i will be i'm gonna it. try that man yeah. i'm gonna even fake it get some blueberries kind of freeze them for a bit yeah. and throw them in i dreamt did you have any food dreams while you're out there in I, the later days i don't even know if i had any dreams. no yeah. i'm not one to remember dreams yeah, i i yeah. just uh, it's very rare yeah. that i get that mm -hmm. so i don't know mm -hmm. uh, i i really don't know i don't mm -hmm. i certainly don't remember having any food dreams but i had yeah. lots of food thoughts i, while I, I had a dream there. that i shot a moose and uh -huh. i woke up like, no you know what i mean and then i had a dream that i was gonna make a. uh, uh uh, Reese's Pieces pancakes. So pancakes <laughs> with Reese's Pieces. I was just like eating them. I never heard of this before in my life. So when I got home and I was well enough, I pounded me some a good hearty stack of Reese's Pieces pancakes. And how and are they're, they? They're they're very very good. I highly recommend giving them the shot. Yeah, yeah. yeah chocolate yeah. chip. Pancake. Probably not the healthiest. But, no, you know, uh, you know yeah. it's like yeah. uh, my my youngest son's girlfriend. She made mm -hmm. a peanut butter cheesecake for his birthday there mm -hmm. on January third. My God, was it good? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And she made an Oreo yeah. crust instead of the graham yeah. crust, and took Oreo cookies and cut yeah. them all. Up. Man, oh, yeah. what a great cheesecake! You ever do uh, maple syrup, maple sugar? I make it home? every spring. Oh, do it? Yeah, yeah. I, too, uh, uh, since since my boys were yeah. basically old enough to yeah. uh, walk, uh, we've been making maple syrup. A buddy yeah. of mine, Dan, he made a three by three uh, stainless pan. I still oh, do nice. mine on a open wood fire. Uh, Cinder box. Uh, I like that smoky. Uh, my dad welded me up a little frame nice. and put yeah. some metal sides on it. Yeah, and, it's yeah. the best. Yeah, we go uh, barrel stove. How, how many trees do you tap? I only tap like 20 to 25 traps. Yeah, yeah, about the same. I think we're doing like 30. We have the hill here, though, so yeah. we can we actually use the tubes, guide oh, yeah, it all nice. into a big cistern. I got snowshoes you know? and five-gallon buckets. Yeah, <laughs> that's fun. That's that's yeah, more, I, more, more honest. And then the other ones we do, we snowshoe around, and then we started doing the boil downs on the driveway, though, so we still got to carry it up the hill just because it's easier to manage with right. the kids and just out there. And, yeah. you know, I put a wall tent sometimes up on the driveway so we have a warm place and super fun. By the I, end of the boil down season, I'm kind of, I'm a little over it, but see, and yeah. I like the dark syrup, so yeah. I start a little later. Uh, okay, and yeah, I'm not yeah. worried about getting yeah. so much. Syrup. Like right. I do, you know, usually if I do three to five gallons, yeah, I'm more than happy. That does me all mine and gives me, a, you know, a jar to give to my uncle yeah. or my aunt, or whoever I feel. Well, that's the best because people love that gift, man. right? It's like, could you give someone a better? Well, gift? You know, and mm -hmm. like that's what we do all the time now mm -hmm. because we're all. If we have some or need mm. something, we go buy it, mm -hmm. you know? So when it comes to like mm. Christmas and I had a, an old Greek, my mother loves uh, baklava, baklava, depends how mm. you say it. This elderly Greek lady in Bracebridge, mm -hmm. she makes the most incredible baklava that you've ever eaten mm -hmm. in life, and it's just saturated with honey. That crisp is kind of crunchy oh, and crispy, and yeah, it's like a pastry that that's beautiful. sweet. Layers of phyllo. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, my mother, she loved, so gave her a tray of that. Yeah. You know, some uh, some maple syrup, some, uh, a bottle of wine, yeah. you know, a few, because yeah. that's stuff they'll use. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, you know, my uh, one son's girlfriend's mother, she's Italian. She homemade biscotti and almond mm. cooking, sends us up a whole. Nice. That's a 
perfect gift. You know? It really is. It you really don't is. need yeah. money. Yeah. To, you know? No. And uh, that, the best but, things in life are free, they say. Pretty much, yeah. right? Well, me and Tori were thinking about getting chickens, and then it's tough because we travel. And uh, But my neighbor's got more eggs than he knows what to do with. Hired his son to his neighborhood job is to drive around on his quad and deliver eggs for five bucks a dozen. Right. You know what I mean? Sometimes we do a little barter if we have some fish or some maple right. syrup or whatever. And it's just kind of fun to sort of li- uh, be a little bit to share like that and be a bit of a, a community as well and get these really good fresh eggs and real maple syrup. And it's the kind of funny that that's like special, that just feeding ourselves and sharing is like different nowadays. Exactly. It's kind of crazy, but it, it is awesome. The, the world needs more yeah. of it. And, yeah. You know, I can remember doing that as my as a kid. My grandfather would have extra tomatoes and extra cucumbers yeah. and extra and he'd take them down to the yeah. three or four neighbors and then they'd yeah. bring them extra potatoes and extra beets and whatever they had yeah. and everybody shared now we yeah. hardly know who our neighbors are no and, i know i know, know. And, it's weird it's weird i got you know actually uh just around here there's a mix of people that are cottagers and people that live here full time and i used to go somewhere else to deer hunt and this year getting back there asking around meeting the the people and you know how people get with deer hunting on other people's crown land oh, yeah. areas and it's like it's like gang territory right you know ended up just making a bunch of new friends coming up with something that worked well for everybody stay in touch with these people i'm like this guy's been down the road for me for seven freaking years and never even you know never right. talk to him it's just what's weird i guess that's and we're both deer hunters right he ended up probably pushing the buck to us anyways by accident right <laughs> you know and uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's you know and it's the same thing we talk about respect yeah you know I don't want people on my, pro- and that's why I hunt yeah. private land. Yeah. And, you know, one of the guys that uh, I've known a long time, Yeah. Uh, you know, his two sons were going to hunt an area, you know, it's a big chunk of cow, yeah. man. Yeah. And Paul got in touch with me. Hey, why have my boys want to go and hunt in at this certain spot? We know yeah. you've hunted there. This is where they're going to be hunting. Is that going to impose on you? And yeah. I said, nope, we're all good. Right. You know, right. and that's just a simple respect thing. Right. And there's lots of bush out there. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, just Some people just don't crown. know. It's again, you're talking about people that just litter, that just don't know, that are just starting and they go in there. And next right. thing you know, they set up on right under somebody's stand where they've like planned and built it and just ruin it for the next guy. Like you see that stuff happening too. Yeah, you yeah, go out on opening day yeah. of gun season and yeah. you're boom, 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 yeah, boom. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell are you shooting at? You're right. I, you know, yeah. and, and yeah. when you give somebody, yeah. I'm going to use the term city it mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. for. <laughs> These guys that pick mm-hmm. up a gun one or two weeks of the whole year mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then go out and shoot deer. Well, mm-hmm. that's not fair to the deer. No, and first their scopes of all. are probably off. and Yeah, they just no. don't even know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, in Norway, if you shoot a big game animal, mm-hmm. you take it to an inspection station mm-hmm. and they inspect the wound. Mm-hmm. And if you have not made a perfect clean kill, mm-hmm. they're going to say, what's this other hole here? Mm-hmm. What's it? And if you have two mistakes, mm-hmm. they pull your license. Interesting. You know, and mm-hmm. it. That's showing yeah. a respect yeah. for the sport you're doing. Right, right. You know, we're not, these guys that are out there and, oh, it's brown. And I was one of those guys. Yeah, when I yeah, grew up, yeah. you know, if it's brown, it's down. And right. I'd be hanging blasting and everything. I haven't shot a, a big game animal with a gun since 2006. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. And it's not that I have anything yeah. against gun hunting. Yeah. My dad still gun hunts. And, yeah. uh, you know, I. but even if you're going with a gun, Show the animal enough courtesy and respect to do it with one shot. Yeah, absolutely. And, I, you know, it's such a it's such a, a, a ridiculous thing that you hear people, mostly non-hunters, well, you should hunt with a gun but rather than a bow because it, it dies more humanely. It's like, really, what would you rather be hunted with? Right. The odds on you getting shot with a bow are like 10 times less. Right. You know what I mean? Than, than a rifle. I it's know like, if somebody shoots yeah. me with a bow, yeah. they're shooting at me. Right. You know, right. A, a yeah. gun yeah. Uh, it could be from a guy yeah. a mile away. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. And also, uh, unfortunately, hunting injuries that are accidental shootings with a bow actually result in death more often than with a gun because it's just bleeding. Oh, the cart big creates time. more blood. So, and, you know, you know it, they give, I, yeah. if you know what um, mm-hmm. lactic acid is, mm-hmm. they give, if you go, if somebody goes and pushes a deer or runs a deer with a dog yeah. or whatever, and it's shot under stress. Right. And then you take one that walks under a tree stand yeah get shot by an arrow that nobody's ever seen that that deer never known that hunter was there it's just all of a sudden an arrow goes sizzling through him yeah and he dies yeah i will show you which is which wow. just by looking at the color of the meat nice and yeah. anybody that's an experienced butcher yeah. or whatever and it's lactic acid yeah and it's what's released because of adrenaline uh-huh okay and it makes your animals taste bad 
Mm. And, mm-hmm. it, you know, I've heard I've heard some people say, well, bow hunting because the animal runs so far after the kill that it could create it to not taste as good. I haven't uh, personally found that. But. A, a, a deer mm-hmm. shot with a bow cleanly mm-hmm. yeah. will not run any further yeah. than a gun. Right, right. OK, if right. you take a deer and you shoot it through the lungs, right. double lung What's with a 30 odd six right. and then you shoot it with an arrow. Yeah, it's probably going to die quicker with the arrow because right. it's going to bleed out quicker. Yeah, yeah. You shoot him with a gun, mm-hmm. punch it through the shoulder, you're just going to watch it lay there and kick. Mm-hmm. It's just not going to run. It's mm-hmm. still going to exhaust the same amount of energy and all mm-hmm. the rest of it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> That's not shot with a bow. You ever seen a deer or a moose shot with a bow and just stand mm-hmm. there and mm-hmm. not know what's happened? Mm, can't say I have. Yeah. Yeah. I've shot, I don't know, 30, 35 mm-hmm. deer with a bow. Mm-hmm. And I've seen numerous of them. Mm-hmm. Stand- I, I remember the... The one moose I shot, my son Evan and I were standing there, and I put an arrow right through <clears throat> both lungs. He ran. I grunted at him. He stopped. Mm-hmm. The sun's just coming up, and he stood there, and he's looking right at me, and I'm telling mm-hmm. him, don't move, don't move. Mm-hmm. And he stood there for maybe 10, 15 seconds, and then he started going like this, uh, yeah. Yeah. and then he <laughs> fell right over. Yeah. That was the easiest. We had walked, and we were caught, we got out of the truck and we heard two bulls fighting mm-hmm. and cool. we went around got on the downside wind i thought i was new get up figure i'm just going to hit the paddle and these two bulls are going to come charging right out at me yeah. well they start skirting out around yeah as soon as i gave that rattle and they quit mm-hmm. they were just done mm-hmm. and then i noticed some skirting around and I said joe they're heading between the cut and the lake let's go mm-hmm. and we start going i'm spraying my urine and all the rest of it everywhere and Joe, I said, you get down in the swath. And I said, I'll stand outside and call. I just start calling with my son there. And I look around, and Christ, there's one following us. Mm-hmm. And I had just crossed the skid road. I was about 100 yards off mm-hmm. it type thing. This thing was 42 yards away from me. I quilled him. He ran straight back. I grunted. He was right beside that road. And he stood there watching in the sun. And he fell mm-hmm. over. He was 10 feet off the side wow. of the skid road. I told Joe, mm-hmm. you go get the trailer and the truck. Yeah. Evan and I will get this thing field dressed. We got it field dressed, unhooked the trailer, put a rope on it, yanked it up onto the road, yeah. winched it onto the truck. We were back at camp at 8 o'clock in wow. the morning. That wow. day. I'm like, oh, I wish every moose could When do does this. it ever work out like <laughs> yeah. that? Yeah. Just this only- one I had to carry down from the top of like a 1,200-foot mountain, bushwhack <laughs> through swamps. You know, like uh, on the other side of a lake. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and yeah, smiled the whole way doing it. Though, oh, it was right? awesome! Right? That was, like we said, you you plan for it. You're ready to do exactly. that. You know what I mean? It's it's part of the adventure. It's part of like fair chase. That's you know, it. I, well. uh, you know, my mm-hmm. hunting sack mm-hmm. goes with two mm-hmm. sets of uh, of um, cheesecloth hunting mm-hmm. bag, big game bags. Yeah. One that I'm going to drag them out with. Mm-hmm. And if it happens to get dirty, I got another set that when I get mm-hmm. to camp and hang up the quarters, I'm going to put a fresh bag on them oh, to keep smart. that all nice and clean. Smart. You know, yeah. Were you bummed with all this uh, hunting and bow hunting experience that you didn't get a chance? I remember you on the show saying like, you know, I thought I'd be out here moose hunting and then you're having to kind of switch it up and go more for small game with the bow and go I more was for definitely, fish. I was still moose yeah. hunting. I just mm-hmm. wasn't successful. Right, right. Yeah, you're constantly. <laughs> but I was successful. totally bummed that yeah. I was like going to that area yeah, and what yeah. I'd researched. I was just there's going to be a moose behind every tree, right? You know, right, that type yeah. thing. And yeah. with my calling abilities and yeah. knowing, I thought for sure that I'm going to be able to call one. And mm. not if I couldn't yeah. believe it. No, where we where I was uh, in um, near uh, Black Lake, uh, the the same thing. We we saw a couple black bear. But uh, yeah, we were told that there weren't a ton of moose just right around there. Like there still were moose, yeah, yeah. but it wasn't loaded like in some other areas. Uh, you know what I mean? Yep. Um, so I, I just kind of guess after watching your show that it might have been similar down there. Like there's for sure moose in the area, but uh, it's maybe not as as loaded as some people might think it is. Right. You That's know the I one mean? thing I loved about like the yeah. Horn Pain area. Mm-hmm. Uh, the year that Aaron shot the first moose we'd ever shot with a bow, mm-hmm. the first moose we'd ever shot at. Mm-hmm. I, I, nice. You know another statement we'd seen yeah, hot yeah. that year it was the 22nd moose that we'd seen wow that we that That's he finally great. put in there yeah. and lots were cows and calves and right. we we only hunt bulls we never yeah. apply for a cow tag or anything right, like that. right. we're just not that way right. we were and hunting with a bow you know you're lucky to shoot a cow right. uh you know you can't really call them at right. all exactly know? yeah yeah cool yeah well wyatt hey man 
I think it's just been awesome to have you here. Is there anything you want to say? Any words of wisdom that you would you'd maybe say to younger kids that are looking at learning how to hunt, that are looking at learning to get into the outdoors and might one day aspire to be at your level? It, don't ever underestimate your ability and always be open to trying something new. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't try it, you'll never know truly whether you enjoy it or not. So, you know, give yourself that opportunity to maybe uh, do something that is rewarding both uh, nutritionally, spiritually, mentally, uh, and can help a lot of others, you know. And uh, when we're talking about conservation, um, some of the best conservationists in this world are the hunters. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that are out there actively doing things. Mm -hmm. Same with the fishermen. So, you know, the next time you want to throw criticism out there about what we do, mm -hmm. uh, and you're out there looking at a wild turkey in Ontario, or you're looking at an elk in Ontario, mm -hmm. thank the hunters that brought them back into this area mm -hmm. and have been the uh, the pioneers of the reintroduction uh, program and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, uh, knowledge is bliss. Uh, mm -hmm. Base your opinions on knowledge, not in ignorance. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, man. Well yeah. said. Well, thanks, man. It's been yeah, a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Thank well, you very much. No problem, man.